Yusei Fudo, Turbo Duelist, Signer, Inheritor of the NRD Legacy and pioneer of a new form of Synchro Summon. And as prolific as he is in the anime, he's arguably even more so in the real world. As the protagonist of the third Yu-Gi-Oh! series, Yusei was set to carry a whole new generation of the card game into the future, and he had a lot on his plate. Not only would they be the face of the first new extra deck summoning mechanic since Fusion, or the first since Ritual if we just look at generic summoning mechanics, they would also drive the narrative of a much more mature setting in the anime. Now, Yu-Gi-Oh! isn't a stranger to dark imagery and themes. The original, like original original, had some pretty Pretty dark games and gruesome consequences. Duel Monsters was littered with rituals and sacrifices, and while GX is largely known for being very happy-go-lucky, it does grapple with concepts like the old exploiting the young, madness, loss, and perhaps most of all, televangelism. But while these themes would drive the narrative for a time, they weren't quite as pervasive as they would be in 5Ds. Right from the get-go, we have a very stratified social hierarchy, a system made to enforce that hierarchy, police officers that are very eager to enforce that hierarchy, and an Illuminati-type organization that uses corporations as a front to advance their own aims. And all of this is before the time-traveling eco-fascists show up. And so, it's not hard to see why Yusei means so much to a lot of people. He's a character that lives in a world much closer to ours, plagued by similar systemic issues. He's clearly more standoffish than any protagonist we've had, with only Yusuku having the same personality trait three series later, but Yusei never gives up on his dream for a brighter tomorrow, fiercely valuing friendship and loyalty, while staunchly believing that every card, no matter what, has value, which is reflected in his deck of choice. While Stardust Dragon is his most well-known ace, I would say that's got a bit more to do with the signer influence than anything else, his true ace being Junk Warrior, headlining a number of other junk and scrap cards, not those ones, as well as cards with similar aesthetics, showing that Yusei finds the potential in all things to be great, even himself. But today, we aren't going to be focusing on Yusei's two most iconic archetypes. Today, we're going to start with the building blocks of Synchro Summoning themselves, the Synchrons, as well as their associated Wario as well as their associated Wario Synchro Monsters, as well as their associated Warrior Synchro Monsters, and through them, the Warrior main deck monsters that Yusei is fond of using from time to time. Hello everyone, Golden Nova here, and we've got a long road ahead of us, so get ready to activate that Speed World Field spell, kick your dual runners into high gear, and let's rev it up! It's time for Yusei Explained Part 1, Synchrons and Warriors. Part P. The P stands for Prologue. So, point of order before we go any further, I'll be grouping Yusei's cards into four general categories, Junk, Synchron, Stardust, and Warrior, with a miscellaneous section to cover anything that doesn't fall into these categories. But the cards suffer from something I like to call World Legacy Syndrome. Several of them belong to multiple themes. Cards like Junk Warrior, Stardust Synchron, Junk Synchron, Stardust Warrior, all that good stuff. So do I have a concrete set of standards to group these cards in a logical order? Heck no! I just decided to add cards to categories based on what I feel is most appropriate. So if I get done with a section and miss a card that technically could belong there, make sure to stick around until the end of this series. Then you can hit me up with all the obscure cards I ended up missing. Would not be the first time. But despite all that preamble, I do feel like the following cards do need to be talked about together. A number of Warrior Synchro Monsters, not monsters with the Warrior typing but are Warrior in name, have specific tuner materials. This is kind of a holdover from Fusion, though I suppose the rest of the Synchros in the beginning sets were supposed to highlight how freeing it was to no longer need a specifically named monster. Now you just needed a specific subtype of monster. So, understandably, it's kind of hard to talk about one without the other. So to start things off, let's talk about one of Yusei's most iconic monsters, Junk Synchron, a level 3 Dark Warrior Tuner monster with 1300 attack and 500 defense. When normal summoned, you can target a level 2 or lower monster in your grave and special summon it in defense position, but its effects are negated. This little buddy is actually a necessary tuner in a lot of synchros, but we'll cover those once we get to the Junk archetype. 
Junk here leverages the power of level 1s and 2s to not only make their signature synchro, but since they don't have any limits on what they can be used for, you can make all kinds of level 4 and 5 synchros. Cataster, Herald of the Arclight, TG Hyper Librarian. Junk Synchron is the pioneer of the one card synchro summon, and so many monsters can trace their designs back to this hardy little mechanic. And it's incredible that they made such a strong impression right out of the gate, striking a pull cord with the player base. And they're integral to making Junk Warrior, a level 5 Dark Warrior Synchro monster with 2300 attack and 1300 defense, requiring Junk Synchron and one or more non-tuner monsters as material. If Synchro summoned, Junk Warrior gains attack equal to the total attack of all level 2 or lower monsters you currently control. This makes it a static gain, so even if you remove those monsters afterwards, this fella still rocks the boost. Now, you'll want to go wide with small monsters before making Junk Warrior to maximize their effect, but if you're clean out of them when you make this Synchro, it's not too late. If you can chain a summon effect to Junk Warrior's effect, they'll hit the board just in time for Junk Warrior to benefit from their attack. Since the attack boost is a mandatory effect, it'll trigger even if it's the only monster on board. And since it checks on resolution, you have a very small window to work with, but it's a chance you can take nonetheless. And you better get it to them soon, because they look pretty hungry. In fact, they might scarf down all that attack at a moment's notice. And while we have him here, we might as well cover Junk Warrior's signature attack spell, Scrap Fist. It's a quick play spell that targets a Junk Warrior you control, and if it battles an opponent's monster this turn, the following effects are applied. Your opponent can't activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step, it deals piercing battle damage, it deals double battle damage, can't be destroyed by a battle, and the opposing monster is destroyed at the end of the damage step. Holy Toledo! For those of you who don't know, there are a lot of spells that are meant to be the monster's signature attacks in the anime. And while some of them can be a little out of hand, this one probably has the most going on, and I've covered Skydive Scorcher. Scrap Fist can be used offensively or defensively, either as a way to push for a lot of damage, especially if Junk Warrior is already souped up with a big attack boost that you can get that double damage with, but can also keep it from being run over while guaranteeing the aggressor gets smashed. And since it lasts for the whole turn, your opponent can't just pick a monster to sacrifice to that effect. They'll have to cool their jets and wait for another opportunity. But since you're probably playing a wacky synchro combo deck if you're playing Junk Warrior on the board, I've got a sneaking suspicion that you're gonna scrap fist bump them off before they can manage a comeback. Nitro Synchron is a level 2 fire machine tuner monster with 300 attack and 100 defense. And if sent to the grave for the synchro summon of a Nitro Synchro monster, you draw a card. So hey, that pays for itself right there. A good measure of any extra deck monster is how well it mitigates any minuses you incur for summoning them. Trishula, for example, is an inherent minus two because you're folding three monsters into one, but makes up for that by stripping away a card from your opponent's hand and field, which evens things out quite nicely, and also banishes a card from their grave as a little bonus. So a tuner drawing you a card replaces that minus one all by itself so the monster you make doesn't even have to worry about balancing the books. Now, the way this effect is worded, you might think that this Synchron is the focal point of a whole Nitro strategy, and it's not. So far, we've only got the one. But if there's a hole in the card pool that could potentially be filled by some kind of duelist pack down the line, you better believe someone in R&D has a whole Nitro archetype in their back pocket for just such an occasion, mark my words. Nitro Warrior is a level 7 Fire Warrior Synchro Monster with 2800 attack and 1800 defense, requiring Nitro Synchron and one or more non-tuner monsters as material. Once, during each of your turns, if you activate a spell card, this card gains 1000 attack during the next attack this turn involving this card, during damage calculation only. And if this attacking card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, after damage calculation, you can target a face-up defense position monster your opponent controls and change that target to attack position. Then this card can make a second attack in a row on that monster. That's actually pretty dope, because if you squint a bit, this card starts to look a lot like Boral Sword Dragon. It's got a double attack, a massive attack boost. If this card wasn't bound to a specific tuner, I'd argue this would see a lot more play than it ended up getting. But it just goes to show that restrictions are kind of the death knell to a card's playability in this game. Because with that specific tuner requirement, this card's kinda... gas. 
Drill Synchron is a level 3 Earth Machine Tuner monster with 800 attack and 300 defense, and it grants your warrior monsters piercing battle damage. And once per turn, if one of your warriors does deal piercing battle damage using this effect, you can draw a card. We do love seeing the ability to push through damage to clean out a game, but an effect like this is kind of at odds with its status as a tuner. We don't need continuous effects that provide benefits from them, we need effects that get them onto the board quickly, cheaply, and if they can manage it, profitably. And that's all without getting into its stat line. You could probably find a niche where this card is usable, but you're gonna have to put one heck of a spin on it. Drill Warrior is a level 6 Earth Warrior Synchro Monster with 2400 attack and 2000 defense, requiring Drill Synchron and one or more non-tuners as material. Once per turn, during your main phase 1, you can have this card's attack, and if you do, it can attack directly this turn. And once per turn, you can discard a card, and if you do, banish this card. And during your next standby phase, you special summon this card banished by this effect, then add a monster from your grave to your hand. Now this might not look it, but Drill Warrior actually saw a lot of competitive play. Being able to apply offensive pressure even if your opponent had a bigger monster was invaluable. And not only was the self-banishing effect a delayed monster reincarnation every turn, being off the field meant your opponent couldn't interact with it using normal spells or ignition monster effects. And of course, it doesn't hurt that Drill Warrior here takes inspiration from one of the most iconic Drill-themed mechas out there, I'm talking about Drill Man, baby, Drill Man. It ain't no Marl Wolf, but we take what we can get. Drill Man, baby, let's go! Turbo Synchron is a level 1 Wind Machine Tuner monster with 100 attack and 500 defense. And when this card declares an attack, you can change the attack target to defense position. And when you take battle damage from this attacking card, you can special summon a monster from your hand with attack less than or equal to the battle damage you took. This is an interesting way of summoning out monsters, not gonna lie. But by turning the monster you attack sideways, it might help your other monsters get over it. Not exactly a groundbreaking play, but it is something. Now we just have to find a way to break the news to him that Link monsters can't be turned to defense position in a way that doesn't leave them exhaust fuming. Turbo Warrior is a level 6 Wind Warrior Synchro Monster with 2500 attack and 1500 defense, requiring Turbo Synchron and one or more non-tuner monsters as material. When this card declares an attack on a level 6 or higher Synchro Monster, that monster's attack is halved until the end of the damage step, and Turbo Warrior can't be targeted by the effects of level 6 or lower monsters. That means no Exiled Force, no Monarchs, and certainly no Sukuyomi. And chances were, if a Synchro was level 6 or higher, it'd have more attack attack than Turbo Warrior here, so the debuff was more than welcome. Not looking so tough now, are ya, Goyo Guardian? And even if they weren't higher, then you'd still walk with the free extra damage. Of course, its synchro requirement, combined with the fact that the debuff only triggers when Turbo attacked, meant it didn't catch much spotlight. But at least they were able to find work on another automotive-based show, Power Rangers Turbo. Road Synchron is a level 4 Light Machine Tuner Monster with 1600 attack and 800 defense. However, when using it as Synchro material for a summon that's not for Road Warrior, its level is reduced by 2. And if this card attacks at the end of the damage step, its level is increased by 1 until the end of the turn. So it's a decently sized monster that can modulate its level a bit with a little roughhousing, letting it pair with a variety of monsters for a wide range of Synchros, provided the battlefield was clear enough for Road Synchron to attack safely. Now, you might wonder why they gave such a restriction to Rhodes' level when used outside of its signature synchro. After all, level 4 tuners nowadays are a dime a dozen. One of the best decks in the format right now makes them as tokens. But for its time, level 4 synchros were dangerous design territory. Some of the best synchros in the game were generic level 8s, and thus, making level 4 tuners meant that access to any easy-to-summon level 4 non-tuner would help you make those big monsters too easily. Usually, the tuners would be level 3 or or lower, requiring some kind of combo line to get enough levels to make those monsters. So when level 4 tuners started cropping up, they had some very odd restrictions or very odd effects. Also, Yuga hadn't quite perfected the whole road concept yet, so there are still a few bugs to work out. Road Warrior is a level 8 Light Warrior Synchro Monster with 3000 attack and 1500 defense, requiring Road Synchron and two or more non-tuner monsters as material. And once per turn, you can special summon a level 2 or lower warrior or machine monster from your deck. So you've got to sink a little more into this monster, but now you're fielding all kinds of low-level utility monsters each turn right out of your deck. 
You could even summon a tuner and use them with Road Warrior to make even bigger synchros. But it's got a heck of a material requirement, and the level range on the summon effect is a bit too narrow for my liking. Road Warrior has a great design, but I'm gonna have to pass on Mad Max here. Jet Synchron is a level 1 fire machine tuner monster with 500 attack and 0 defense, and if sent to the grave as synchro material, you can add a junk monster from your deck to your hand. And if in the grave, you can send a card from your hand to the grave to special summon Jet Synchron, but it's banished when it leaves the field. This does mean you can't get the search if you sync with it after that point, but it's kind of a moot point anyways because you'll want to use it the turn it's summoned, and the two effects are mutually exclusive, not letting you use more than one effect per turn. But it's cool that you get the search no matter what you use it as synchro material for. So use this card however you wish. Is what I would say if this card wasn't banned. That's right, this sentient turbine was a cornerstone of a number of strategies meant to maximize the power of Crystron Halka Fibrax. That monster was hungry for any tuner that could revive itself or make replacement tokens, all in a bid to link climb as much as possible. And since Jet only needed you to pitch a single card in hand, you not only got to double dip on a tuner that just so happened to also have a great level, but enabled any grave synergies you had waiting in the wings. So with a little help, this card really was the little engine that could break the format. However, this does put our next card, Jet Warrior, in a bit of a pickle. They're a level 5 Fire Warrior Synchro monster with 2100 attack and 1200 defense, requiring Jet Synchron and one or more non-tuner monsters as material. If Synchro summoned, you can target a card your opponent controls and return it to the hand. And if this card is in your grave, you can tribute a level 2 or lower monster to special summon this card in defense position, but banish it when it leaves the field. This makes Jet Warrior a really nice Synchro climbing tool, compulsing one of of your opponent's cards while helping you to get to your Excel Synchro monsters the first time around, and can transmogrify one of your level 2 or lowers into Jet Warrior to help make more Excel Synchros in the future. But without Jet Synchron, you'll have to rely on tuners that can substitute Jet Synchron. And spoilers, one of them flat out will not work. So if you're looking for space in your Synchro spam deck, this card's definitely got a Jet. Satellite Synchron is a level 2 Dark Machine Tuner monster with 700 attack and 100 defense. If any number of monsters are special summoned from your grave, except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand. And if there's a Synchro monster with Warrior, Synchron, or Stardust in its original name on your field or in your grave, you can make this card's level 4 until the end of the turn. So this is like Road Synchron, but in the opposite direction. As long as you've got the setup, Satellite can help you access two different levels of Synchros and hits the board for free with any revival effect. So no matter what channel your deck is on, Satellite Synchron is here to help you tune in. Satellite Warrior is a level 10 Dark Warrior Synchro Monster with 2500 attack and 2000 defense, requiring a tuner and one or more non-tuner Synchro Monsters as material. It doesn't need Satellite Synchron as the tuner, but they did come out in the same pack, and they do follow the same naming and visual conventions, so I'm just gonna fit it in here. If this card is Synchro Summoned, you can target cards your opponent controls up to the number of Synchro Monsters in your grave and destroy them. And if you do, this card gains a thousand attack for each card destroyed. And if this Synchro Summoned card is destroyed, you can Special Summon up to three level 8 or lower Warrior, Synchron, and or Stardust Synchro Monsters with different names from your grave. Now, my initial conclusion was that Satellite Warrior was something of a novelty, but in the hands of the right deck, this card has become incredibly fierce. Despite the banning of numerous powerful tuners, Crystron Halka Fibrax has continued to be a mainstay in any competitive Synchro deck. So as long as you have a level 8 Synchro on board, of which there are several nowadays, it can turn into Formula Synchron for a quick Synchro on your opponent's turn, popping at least 2 cards and going up to 4500 attack. And if Satellite Warrior gets destroyed, you'll know you have at least Formula Synchron to grab back. So all in all, the passage of time has given this card more tools to help it operate at peak efficiency. So not only can this card take a beating, it can also Satellite dish it out. Part 1, Synchrons. Okay, now we'll be focusing on the Synchrons in general, be they from Yusei's roster or otherwise. Bry Synchron is a level 4 Earth Machine Tuner Monster with 1500 attack and 1100 defense. And if this card is sent to the grave as Synchro Material until the end of the turn, the Synchro Monster that used this card as Synchro Material gains 600 attack, but its effects are negated. 
This is some classic level 4 tuner material right here. It has to have some kind of drawback, though in this case at least it trades utility for power. And if you only want the synchro you make for its floating effect, then you don't even have to worry about the negate. You can give Colossal Fighter a big upfront boost if you don't have the warriors to match. Coral Dragon won't get the pop, but it'll become a 3000 attack monster that draws you a card when it leaves the field. And non-effect monsters can benefit as well, turning Gaia Knight, the Force of Earth, into a 3200 attack beat stick for the turn. But since the extra deck is a huge source of most decks' utility, it's kind of a hard sell when adding it to your deck list. But here's a little trivia I learned while researching. Brysynchron is based on an 80s mecha anime called Galaxy Cyclone Bryger, which changes size using... Synchron Energy. Gotta love those references. Synchron Carrier is a level 2 Earth Machine monster with 0 attack and 1000 defense. During your main phase, you can normal summon a Synchron monster in addition to your normal summon or set. And if another Synchron monster is sent to the grave as Synchro Material for the Synchro Summon of any Warrior or Machine Synchro monster while you control this card, you can special summon a Synchron token, which is a level 2 Earth Machine monster with 1000 attack and 0 defense. This makes for an excellent pair with Junk Synchron, since you can use that extra normal summon to set up another Synchro uh. summon. Wow. That's my summon champ. Since you can use that extra normal summon to set up another synchro summon, which will trigger the token summoning effect. And if you use them to make a level 5 synchro tuner monster, then you've got them, the level 2 carrier, and the level 2 token, which makes Trishula as well as any generic level 7 or 9 synchro you're after. Either way, this little assistant is here to help carry your plays. Changer Synchron is a level 1 Dark Machine Tuner monster with 0 attack and defense, and if this card is sent to the grave for a synchro summon, you select a monster your opponent controls and change its battle position. So if you're worried your opponent's gonna try and hide behind a defense position monster, or you want to set up some piercing battle damage with a monster like Stardust Assault Warrior, this is the tuner for you. Your opponent may not want to go along with your offensive plans, but I'm sure you'll manage to changer their minds. Cyber Synchron is a level 1 Dark Cybers Tuner monster with 100 attack and defense, and once per turn, you can target a level 4 or lower monster you control and increase its level by its original level until the end of the turn. And if any number of your monsters in the extra monster zone would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can banish this card from your grave instead. Now, this card was released during the first version of Master Rule 4, so there were some instances where you'd have synchros in your extra monster zone because you didn't have a link monster to give you extra zones, so the grave effect could give them a little extra protection. But thankfully, it just checks for monsters in the extra monster zone, so it can protect links, synchros, exceeds, or anything else that ends up in there. And because it can target itself, not only can you double your non-tuner material to get you into bigger monsters, you can change Cyber Synchron to level 2 if you need some fine tuning, giving you that little extra bit of control. Synchron Explorer is a level 2 Earth Machine monster with 0 attack and 700 defense. When normal summoned, you can target a Synchron monster in your grave and special summon that target, but its effects are negated. So it's like Junk Synchron, but only for... the... Uh, the Synchrons. In fact, since it's level 2, it's kind of the perfect complement to them. And while the summoned monster's effects are negated, you can still use them to make a Synchro if the levels match up, or an Xyz if you get a level 2 Synchron. Or just make a Link monster since it has absolutely zero restrictions on it. With all the options this gives you, there's a lot to explore. Hyper Synchron is a level 4 Light Machine Tuner monster with 1600 attack and 800 defense, and modifies the Synchro monster it's used for, much like Bry Synchron. When sent to the grave for the Synchro summon of a Dragon type monster, it gains 800 attack, but that face up monster is banished during the end phase. Now, that can be pretty annoying for any dragon you want to stick on the field to defend your board, like Borload Savage Dragon or Beals, but there are a few that can skip town for a bit to avoid the banished trigger. For instance, if you anticipate your opponent will want to destroy your cards, Stardust Dragon can keep you covered while giving you a little extra muscle. And since Chaos Ruler tends to be part of a longer combo, letting them stick around for a bit while leveraging 3800 attack is certainly an option. And of course, if you don't anticipate the game lasting until your end phase, then you don't have to worry about the downside at all, helping you to kick your win condition into hyperdrive. Monosynchron is a level 1 Dark Machine Tuner monster with 0 attack and defense, and when using this card as Synchro Material, the other material must be level 4 or lower Warrior or Machine type monsters, and they're all treated as level 1. 
so you're not going to be getting any high level synchros with mono anytime soon. But it does help make Formula Synchron very easily, smoothing out the levels of your other monsters without having to hunt down level 1 non-tuners to stick in your deck, or give up the slots of non-tuners you're already running. Well, I mean it does help make Formula, but really, now that Crystron Halka Fibrax exists, this card's basically obsolete, and get used to hearing that from time to time. Halk's a great piece of support for synchros in general, but it sidelines a lot of cards. This isn't the only one. Necrolinker is a piece of Synchron support that's a level 2 Dark Fiend monster with 600 attack and 0 defense. You can tribute this card to select a Synchron Tuner monster in your grave and special summon it, but it can't be used as Synchro material during the turn it's special summoned by this effect. But that doesn't keep it from being used for other kinds of summons, and if you summon a monster that can Synchro summon at quick effect speed, you can just wait out the restriction and use it to spring a Synchro on your opponent when they least expect it. But um... Are we sure this isn't a Jack Atlas card? Fiend seems a bit out of place here. Perform a Pal Odd Eyes Synchron is a level 2 Dark Spellcaster Pendulum Tuner monster with 200 attack and 600 defense with a scale of 6. As a Pendulum spell, once per turn, you can target a Perform a Pal or Odd Eyes monster you control, and this turn, that face up monster is treated as a tuner, also its level becomes 1, even if this card leaves the field. As a monster, if this card special summoned from the extra deck is used as synchro material, it's banished. When this card is normal summoned, you can target a level 3 or lower Perform a Pal or Odd Eyes monster in your grave, special summon it, but its effects are negated. And once per turn, you can target a card in your pendulum zone and special summon it, but its effects are negated, if any. And if you do, immediately after this effect resolves, synchro summon a synchro monster using only that monster and this card. And I thought the you say cards were a word soup of archetypes. Uh, but in general, this card is pretty good. As a spell, it makes your other cards tuners, and since they're likely pendulum monsters, you'll be getting a lot of mileage out of them. And being able to use your scales as synchro material is no small matter. Though at this point, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to rev it up or swing into action. Uh, or is it rev into action and swing it up? All these catchphrases are confusing me. Quick Draw Synchron is a level 5 Wind Machine Tuner monster with 700 attack and 1400 defense, and you can special summon this card from your hand by sending a monster from your hand to the grave. And they can substitute any one Synchron Tuner monster for a Synchro Summon, but can only be used as material for the summon of a monster that lists a Synchron Tuner as material. This is the main reason why Drill Warrior was able to break into the competitive space. Since Quick Draw doesn't need to take up your normal summon, it's easier to get onto the board than Drill Synchron, and if you pitch Dandelion, then that's Drill Warrior right there. And even way beyond that point, it made for the perfect tuner to summon Ultimaya Zulkin. Despite the restrictions on this card, it's surprisingly versatile, but make sure you do keep those restrictions in mind. You wouldn't want to jump the gun. Righty Driver is a level 1 machine tuner monster with 100 attack and 300 defense, and like Quick Draw Synchron, can substitute the Synchron tuner for a Synchro Summon. If normal summoned, you can special summon a Lefty Driver from your hand, deck, or grave. As for Lefty Driver, it's a level 2 Earth Machine monster with 300 attack and 100 defense, and if special summoned, you can make this card level 3 until the end of the turn. And during your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the grave, you can banish this card from your grave to add a Righty Driver from your deck to your hand. So in combination, normal summoning Righty can get you a level 3 or 4 Synchro, and next turn you can banish Lefty Driver to get 4 more levels worth of material, giving you access to a variety of your Warrior Synchro monsters if need be. Or, if you want to push the boundaries of Synchro Summoning, use the drivers to fast track you into Earth's Arctic Polari. Now that's what I call some serious hardware. Or should I say, hard bear? Rocket Synchron is a level 1 Dark Dragon Tuner monster with 0 attack and defense, and when normal summoned, you can target a level 5 or higher Dark Dragon monster in your grave and special summon it in defense position, negate its effects, and destroy it during the end phase. But you also can't special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn, except Dark Monsters. Ah, uh, it looks like even Revolver is getting in on the Synchron train, huh? Ideally, you'll be reviving Absorouter Dragon with this effect, so when you Synchro Summon a level 8 monster, you get a free rocket search, but as long as you're looking to summon darks, the sky's the limit, and getting to the sky's pretty easy if you've got a rocket. 
Stardust Synchron is a level 4 light machine tuner monster with 1500 attack and 1000 defense, and while in your hand or grave, you can tribute a monster to special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. Also, you can't special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn, except Synchro Monsters. And if this card is normal or special summoned, you can add a spell or trap card from your deck to your hand that lists Stardust Dragon in its text. We'll get into the cards you can search with this next episode, but trust me, we've got some doozies. And since you contribute a monster to recur them, they make for a great long-term tuner. I know we've talked about a few level 4 tuners so far, but this one leaves the rest of them in the dust. Steam Synchron is a level 3 water machine tuner monster with 600 attack and 800 defense, and during your opponent's main phase as a quick effect, you can, immediately after this effect resolves, Synchro Summon using this card you control. Ah, the much vaunted Quick Effect Synchro Summon, usually relegated to specific archetypes or Synchro tuners. But Steam here can be used with anything, so long as you don't wait until the battle phase to pull it off. Summon the right monster with this, and you'll be in a great position to Steam clean up your opponent's board. Unknown Synchron is a level 1 Dark Machine Tuner monster with 0 attack and defense. If your opponent controls a monster and you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. But you can only special summon Unknown Synchron this way once per duel. So it's a tuner with Cyber Dragon summoning conditions. And while the once per duel restriction means you're not likely to run more than one, its type, level, and attribute are very advantageous. Not just for Synchro summoning, but for Link summoning as well. As for why why they were so stingy with this effect, well, it's unknown to me. Okay, now it's time for some extra deck Synchrons. Formula Synchron is a level 2 light machine Synchro Tuner monster with 200 attack and 1500 defense, requiring generic material. When Synchro summoned, you can draw a card, and once per turn, during your opponent's main phase, you can, immediately after this effect resolves, Synchro summon using this card you control. It works much like Steam Synchron, but lives in your extra deck so you can't brick on it, and draws you a card immediately on summon, so it makes up for the minus one you incur from making it. It's also a great target for Crystron Halka Fibrax to summon, since you get the draw anyway, because the summon is counted as a Synchro Summon, and opens up the path to make Black Rose Dragon, Satellite Warrior, and Baron de Fleur all on your opponent's turn. Yu-Gi-Oh! is basically a race to see who can get their win condition first, and with Formula Synchron, you'll be able to keep pace. Excel Synchron is a level 5 Dark Machine Synchro Tuner monster with 500 attack and 2100 defense, requiring generic material, and can only be Synchro summoned once per turn. Once per turn, you can send a Synchron monster from your deck to the grave, then either increase or decrease Excel Synchron's level by the level of the sent monster. And as a quick effect during your opponent's main phase, immediately after this effect resolves, Synchro Summon using this card you control. So not only does this make Excel incredibly flexible when it comes to what Synchros you can go into, it can also bin any Synchron to set them up for later. For instance, you can send Stardust Synchron to the grave and tribute Excel to get the search. It has a huge range of options, which is what you want out of your Synchro enablers. In fact, I'd go so far as to say it excels in that field. Alright, now it's time for some Synchron spells. Ready, Set, Duel is a continuous spell that, when activated, if you control no other cards, adds a Synchron monster from your deck to your hand. Once per turn, during your standby phase, you place a signal counter on this card. And you can remove two signal counters from anywhere on your field, and send this face-up card to the grave to draw two cards, then send a card from your hand to the grave. This is one of the new cards that came out of the History Archive collection, and it's pretty rad. Not only does it grab you a Synchron if activated at the start of the game, and maybe even later, but it's also a big Turbo Duel reference. The signal counters act as speed counters, and the drawing effect is much like speed spell Angel Baton, a card that saw a lot of play in the anime. Its usage of signal counters also synergizes with a warrior synchro we'll be talking about in a bit. Suffice it to say, if you want a duel like you're tearing up the track, this is a great card to add to your deck. It also reminds us all of the time you say trounced officer trudge, and that always brings a smile to my face. Synchro Dilemma is a continuous spell that can activate one of two effects each turn. You can either send a Synchron monster from your hand or face-up field to the grave to special summon a monster from your hand, or target another card you control, destroy it, 
and if you do, special summon a Synchron monster from your grave with a different original name than the card you destroyed from your hand or grave. Now, I've already covered this card, as well as the cards featured in the art, Fleur Synchron and Necro Synchron, in my video covering all of the Fleur cards, and while I won't be going over those monsters in these videos again, I feel like this spell is tied enough to Synchrons in general to be included. It helps mobilize cards out of your hand, as well as giving you back some of your better Synchrons so you can use them again. If you'd like a more in-depth analysis, as well as the pun for this section, you can check out the video right here. Hope you enjoy! Synchronized Realm is a continuous spell that burns your opponent for 500 damage each time you Synchro Summon, and it's literally only here because it has Synchron in the name. Next, our last Synchron spell is probably the most iconic, Tuning. A normal spell that adds a Synchron Tuner monster from your deck to your hand, then sends the top card of your deck to the grave. I have no idea why they tack that on at the end, but at least you get the search first, so as long as you have a legal target, you won't accidentally whiff. And you might sometimes mill a relevant card off the top, so that's cool. Sadly, it can't search any of our non-tuners, so cards like Synchron Carrier and Synchron Explorer are out. But I won't harp on about it for too long. I'm sure they have a reason for not letting this happen noted down somewhere, so they can string us along with that information. Okay, okay, that was a bit much, but I will leave off this section by saying that this card is instrumental to your success. Part 2, Warrior. This section will cover the myriad warrior monsters used by Yusei, and even some not used by Yusei but fit the general vibe. For instance, Toon Warrior is a level 3 Earth Warrior normal tuner monster with 1600 attack and 200 defense. This warrior's antenna can attune to any energy wave. It can monitor transmissions from miles away, but also suffers from bad reception. Oh, poor thing. Strictly speaking, this came out in some starter decks, but it was also part of the intro to Synchros, and it's got Warrior in the name, so I'm counting it. And it's good that we have a decently leveled tuner that we can use Unexpected Die on. Just, uh, don't mix it up with any Toon monsters, because that's a whole different subtype. Backup Warrior is a level 5 Earth Warrior monster with 2100 attack and 0 defense that can't be normal summoned or set, and must first be special summoned from your hand while the only monsters you control are two defense position monsters. But you can't synchro summon the turn you special summon this card. This can also be circumvented by using quick synchro effects to do so on your opponent's turn, but you could also just... Uh, not synchro. As the game has progressed, monsters have become the key to a number of different extra deck strategies, even if they don't belong to a particular deck. Backup Soldier might stop you from Synchro Summoning, but 5 is a very advantageous level for Xyz Summoning, and more monsters on board means better Link Summons. They also look like if Ted Tonate and the TF2 Soldier got hit by Polymerization, and that's just neat. Big One Warrior is a level 1 light warrior monster with 100 attack and 600 defense. And during your main phase, you can send a level 1 monster, except this card, from your hand to the grave to special summon this card from your hand. So if you ever need a discard outlet for level 1 monsters, this fella's got you covered. Though, I've gotta say, I think there's a bit of hyperbole going on here. They don't seem like a big one warrior, they look more like a regular sized one warrior to me. I mean, look at its stat line. Boost Warrior is a level 1 Fire Warrior monster with 300 attack and 200 defense, and if you control a face-up tuner monster, you can special summon this card from your hand in defense position. And while on the field, all Warrior-type monsters you control gain 300 attack. So hey, a free level to go with your tuners, that can be pretty nice. Or you can have them stick around to pump up your Warriors. But to be honest, its stat line is way too small to be sticking around on the field, especially for such a small signal boost. Doppel Warrior is a level 2 Dark Warrior monster with 800 attack and defense, and when any number of monsters are special summoned from your grave, except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand. And if this card is sent to the grave as Synchro Material, you can special summon two Doppel Tokens, which are level 1 Dark Warrior monsters with 400 attack and defense. This is summoned like Satellite Synchron, but where that's a tuner that's a key component to Synchro Summons, Doppel Warrior is a non-tuner with a wealth of extension options, essentially re funding you the levels when used for a Synchro Summon. So you can pair them with another tuner, or if you Synchro Summoned a Synchro Tuner, you can use them to climb the ladder even higher. In fact, it was so prevalent that it paired with Junk Synchron's Revival effect to spawn a new series of deck lists that fell under the colloquial term Junk Doppel. 
This meant that you were just as likely to duel against someone with this deck as you were of playing it. But that just means you can have a nice Sonic Adventure 2 moment with your opponent, and that's pretty neat. Fortress Warrior is a level 2 Earth Warrior monster with 600 attack and 1200 defense. You take no battle damage from attacks involving this card, and once per turn, this card can't be destroyed by battle. To use Junk Synchron effectively, you need level 2s that can carry you to the finish line. And while it's not going to benefit from any of these fine effects after being summoned this way, if you need a wall to help keep your opponent off your life points while you're setting up, Fortress Warrior can keep you covered on their initial summon and makes for a good revival target for Junk Synchron. But good luck trying to land a helicopter on that pad. This warrior may be hardy, but doesn't look like they have the steadiest grip. Gauntlet Warrior is a level 3 Earth Warrior monster with 400 attack and 1600 defense, and during either player's turn as a quick effect, you can tribute this card to grant each warrior type monster you currently control a 500 attack and defense boost until the end of the next damage step that monster attacks or is attacked. So you have a decently sized defender that you can cash in at any time for a boost to your whole warrior field. And with a little bit of damage step ruling knowledge, you can get the block and the boost all at the same time. See, at the point Gauntlet Warrior is flipped up in the damage step, it's not destroyed. That comes a little bit further ahead. Normally, you can't activate ignition quick effects during the damage step, except ones that alter attack and defense. So the second Gauntlet gets flipped up and your opponent's monster has 1700 or more attack, you can tribute Gauntlet Warrior to pump up the rest of your warrior board, and since you're already in damage step, they don't get a replay. Ah, uh, I love the Power Glove. It's so bad. Level Warrior is a level 3 light warrior monster with 300 attack and 600 defense. But don't let those level stars fool you. If there are no monsters on the field at all, you can normal summon Level Warrior as a level 2 monster. And if your opponent controls a monster while you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand as a level 4 monster. The level modulation is pretty sweet, but I've gotta say, having to be so dependent on your opponent's board state, not to mention your own, makes this very situational. It's certainly no Gaga Ga Magician. Also, are levels like a known quantity in whatever universe these monsters hail from, and not some abstract concept like in most games? Cause I got a level with you. that'd be pretty cool. Max Warrior is a level 4 Wind Warrior monster with 1800 attack and 800 defense. And if it attacks an opponent's monster, Max gains 400 attack during the damage step only. And if this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle until the next standby phase, this card's level becomes 2, and its original attack and defense are halved. So you get an attacker that's bigger than Cyber Dragon, but if you kill anything with it, they get smaller than Sangan on your opponent's turn, both in terms of attack and level. Though the level change might be to your advantage, depending on the other material you have access to. Initially, I was kinda peeved that a card called Max Warrior peters out after only a single attack, but you know what? After you exert yourself for those extra attack points, you totally deserve a break, so you rest up, Max Warrior. Even if that means you get horribly mangled by the opponent's Crackback. Rescue Warrior is a level 4 Earth Warrior monster with 1600 attack and 1700 defense. You take no battle damage in battles involving this card, and if this card is destroyed by battle, select a face-up monster your opponent controls that you own and take control of it. This is a weird card, but if your opponent has stolen your monster via illicit, non-continuous effect means, this card is a surefire way to get him back. Heck, you can even have him crash into a kaiju if you're worried your opponent's going to be able to capitalize on it. Besides, it looks like this public servant has plenty of E-Tanks, so I'm... sure they'll be fine running headfirst into a giant monster. Totally fine. Rockstone Warrior is a level 4 Earth Rock monster with 1800 attack and 1600 defense. You take no battle damage from battles involving this card, and when this attacking card is destroyed by battle and sent to the grave, special summon two Rockstone tokens, which are level 1 Earth Rock monsters with zero attack and defense that can't be tributed for a tribute summon. So this turns four of your levels into... two? It doesn't sound very good on the surface, but some of the most powerful early synchro monsters required multiple non-tuner monsters, so having the level spread out across multiple monsters can help. And in a more modern context, that's just more monsters for Link summoning. But since it only gets you the tokens when you specifically attack with Rockstone Warrior into a monster, it's not exactly going to help you build up a defensive wall. But not taking any battle damage from their battles is pretty neat, and they make it so your next synchro summon is just a stone's throw away. Salvage Warrior is a level 5 Water Warrior monster with 1900 attack and 1600 defense, and when Tribute summoned, you can special summon a Tuner monster from your hand or grave. Which is... 
actually kind of cool. If you special summon a tuner, you contribute it for salvage, which can then bring back that tuner, assembling everything you need for a synchro summon. It's an incredibly cool design that helps you access higher levels of synchro monsters, but don't think I don't recognize that helmet, Buster. You're clearly drawing inspiration from the classic Mega Man Legends robot, Balkan Garrett. And I like your style. Shield Warrior is a level 3 Earth Warrior monster with 800 attack and 1600 defense, and during damage calculation on either player's turn as a quick effect, you can banish this card from your grave, and monsters you control can't be destroyed by that battle. So much like Gauntlet Warrior, Shield Warrior can keep your team safe after taking a beating, but in this case, Shield does actually have to be destroyed. I remember this being a wonderful little tech pick that I'd run in Gladiator Beasts to ensure they survived combat so they could get their effects. But I fear that if I talk too much about him here, I'll be adding a bit too much GX flavor to the 5D's formula we're baking up here. Turret Warrior is a level 5 Earth Warrior monster with 1200 attack and 2000 defense, and you can special summon this card from your hand by tributing a warrior monster, and if you do, Turret Warrior gains attack equal to the tributed monster's attack. Now, several of our warriors have shown up because they can help facilitate synchro summons, and while summoning a level 5 monster can help with this, I'm positive that Turret Warrior is much more ready to throw down than to get synced up. It essentially adds 1200 attack to a warrior you already control, and if it's decently sized, turret warrior can swing in with the best of them. And none of it starts a chain, so if you normal summon an 1800 attack warrior, you can follow up with turret warrior and beat up most threats in the game. They truly are a high caliber of monster. Now we're going to focus on another one of Yusei's iconic monsters that ended up inspiring a few more like it. Speed Warrior is a level 2 Wind Warrior monster with 900 attack and 400 defense. And once per battle phase, if this card was normal summoned this turn, except during the damage step, you can make its attack become double its original attack until the end of the battle phase. I suppose they felt strapping 1800 attack to a level 2 body was a bit much, so the compromise was to only make it 1800 for a turn before it ran out of gas. But now you had a monster that could dish out a little bit of offensive pressure, and when it was inevitably destroyed, Junk Synchron could come along and revive it, using them as the non-tuner material to really speed things up. And they wanted you to play this monster really badly, because they even gave Speed Warrior specific support. Limiter Overload is a normal trap that doesn't actually have an effect that you can activate, but if sent to the grave, you special summon a speed warrior from your hand, deck, or grave. And there's no caveats to this. You can discard it, mill it, send it to the grave with foolish burial goods, summon it to the field with magical hats, then trigger that effect when magical hats no longer applies. It's actually kinda nutty. But see, this is why you remove limiters before they get this bad. Maintenance is super important. And from this point, we'd see a number of Wind Warriors with a similar aesthetic that all had names referring to speed in one way or another. For instance, Dash Warrior is a level 3 Wind Warrior monster with 600 attack and 1200 defense, and if this card attacks, it gains 1200 attack during the damage step only. This is largely a strictly improved version of Speed Warrior. While it passively has 300 less attack, those differences at that low of an attack rung are negligible but it always attacks as an 1800 point monster, not just the turn it's summoned. The only thing Speed Warrior really has over Dash Warrior is its lower level, so it's summonable by Junk Synchron and can have their attack absorbed by Junk Warrior. So as you can see, there are some Dash pros and Dash cons. Rapid Warrior is a level 4 Wind Warrior monster with 1200 attack and 200 defense, and during your main phase 1 you can activate this card's effect that lets it attack directly, but other monsters cannot attack during the turn you activate this effect, which effectively makes it a main deck Drill Warrior without the banish shenanigans. Probably not the best at the beginning of the game, but when things are down to the wire, you can count on this card to bring the duel to a rapid end. Rush Warrior is a level 2 Wind Warrior monster with 300 attack and 1200 defense, and during damage calculation on either player's turn, if a Warrior Synchro monster you control battles an opponent's monster, you can send this card from your hand to the grave to double your battling monster's current attack during that damage calculation only, and you can banish this card from your grave to target a Synchro monster in your grave and add it to your hand. So it's not always going to be in your grave for Junk Synchro to scoop it up, rather it can scoop up Junk Synchro so you can use its effect on other monsters, and being something of a Bujingi crane is pretty wild. I mean, imagine dropping this on a juiced up satellite warrior. Now that's rush dueling. 
Our last main deck monster is Sonic Warrior, a level 2 wind warrior monster with 1000 attack and 0 defense, and if sent to the grave, all level 2 or lower monsters you currently control gain 500 attack. So if you're looking to put Junk Warrior over the top, this is how you do it. Revive this with Junk Synchron, then use it and Sonic to make Junk Warrior. And for every level 2 or lower monster you control, you're adding an additional 500 attack to your big warrior, letting you take out your opponent with a Sonic Boom! Okay, now it's time for our Synchro Warriors. Catapult Warrior is a level 5 Earth Warrior Synchro Monster with 1000 attack and 1500 defense, requiring generic material. Once per turn, you can tribute a Junk Monster to inflict damage to your opponent equal to the original attack of the tributed monster. So it's a very specific Catapult Turtle, gotta love those callbacks, but in this case you get the full value of the damage, while correcting for the fact that Catapult Turtle was, given the right setup, an FTK. So it's been given the Dark Strike Fighter treatment, making it so you can only use the effect once per turn. But the Junk Synchro lineup offers a lot of high attack monsters that you can trade away to close out the game, launching you towards victory. Gravity Warrior is a level 6 Earth Warrior Synchro monster with 2100 attack and 1000 defense, requiring generic material. When Synchro Summoned, it gains 300 attack for each face-up monster your opponent controls. And once per turn, during your opponent's battle phase, you can target a defense position monster your opponent controls, change it to face-up attack position, also it must attack this turn if able. It's not obligated to hit Gravity Warrior specifically, nor is it obligated to attack first, so your opponent can bowl over Gravity Warrior with another monster if they have the mind to. But even if your opponent only controls two monsters, Gravity swells up to a nifty 2700, so they better have a big bruiser to take him out. But since savvy opponents will just wait until main phase 2 to summon anything in defense position, I'm still not convinced it has a place in most extra decks. But this is what happens when you get sloppy effect text that doesn't cover these kinds of contingencies. But maybe this warrior would have shaped up if they understood the gravity of the situation. Lightning Warrior is a level 7 light warrior synchro monster with 2400 attack and 1200 defense, requiring generic material. If this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the grave, inflict 300 damage to your opponent for each card in their hand. Funny way to jab at your opponent if they don't want to commit their cards to the field for fear of removal, or for just drawing a bunch of cards, though it doesn't really scale up particularly well. But it does mean that if your opponent is hiding behind a defense position monster, you have a way to do some damage through it. But don't be shocked if you never see this card ever again. Mighty Warrior is a level 6 Earth Warrior Synchro Monster with 2200 attack and 2000 defense, requiring generic material. If this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, inflict damage to your opponent equal to half the destroyed monster's original attack. Wait a sec. Burn, based on the attack of the monster it destroys, has one big arm and a regular arm, is a level 6 warrior... Hey, wait a sec, this card just copied off Flame Wingman! Am I saying it's a ripoff? Uh, not exactly. I mean, they're from the same game after all, so it could be a case of carrying over familiar motifs, but you have to admit, they look mighty similar. Scarred Warrior is a level 5 Earth Warrior Synchro Monster with 2100 attack and 1000 defense. While on the field, your opponent can't target warrior type monsters you control for attacks, except this one. And once per turn, if this card would be destroyed by a battle, it's not. So Scarred can draw attention away from your other warrior type monsters while being a really tough cookie to crumble themselves. And thankfully, they're worded in such a way that should you field two of them, causes an attack lockout as long as they're on board. So the lesson is, don't mess with this monster. They lost a hand and their next course of action was to strap a sword to it. Groovy. Seven Swords Warrior is a level 7 Earth Warrior Synchro Monster with 2300 attack and 1800 defense, requiring generic material. Once per turn, when an equipped card is equipped to this card, inflict 800 points of damage to your opponent. I love adding Ukazi to Noble Arms Gallatin. And once per turn, you can target an equipped card equipped to this card and send it to the grave. And when an equipped card equipped to this card is sent to the grave, except during the damage step, you can target a face-up monster your opponent controls and destroy that target. That's actually pretty sweet. If this were fire attribute, I could easily see this as a backup card that you would equip Noble Arms or the equipping Infer Noble Knights to it as a way to push for game and remove cards. As it stands now, it's just kind of cool. If you like equip spells the way I do and want to build a very funny deck, you should definitely consider adding this card as your ace. And you know, good luck to your opponent if they try to get through this monster. They're behind seven swords. Now, 
I've saved probably the most 5Ds card ever for our last card this episode. Presenting Signal Warrior, a level 7 light warrior synchro monster with 2400 attack and 1000 defense, requiring generic material. Once per turn, during the standby phase, you place a signal counter on each face-up card in the field zones, as well as Signal Warrior. This card with signal counters can't be destroyed by battle or your opponent's card effects, and once per turn, you can remove 4, 7, or 10 signal counters from anywhere on the field to apply one of the following effects, depending on the number removed. For 4, you burn your opponent for 800 damage, for 7, you draw a card, and for 10, you destroy a card on the field, no targeting required. Yes, this is Yusei's Dual Runner, the Yusei Go, love that name. Yes, that is Yusei's helmet being used for the head, and yes, the signal counter effect does mimic Speed World 2, being almost a carbon copy of its text. And this would be expanded on once Ready, Set, Duel was released, giving you another way to generate signal counters, though on that card it only triggers during your standby phase, unlike Signal Warrior which triggers during both player standby phases. I also like how it puts the signal counters on field spells because, you know, the Speed World field spell. So with Signal Warrior, two face-up field spells, and a single ready set duel active, you can generate seven signal counters across your turn and your opponents, with even more being made if you can summon more Signal Warriors. This is certainly a much more for fun card, there's a lot of removal that can get past destruction protection, not to mention you need to be running something that guarantees your opponent has a field spell to make the most of their effect, but you can't deny how freaking cool it is to have a monster that's one of the coolest pieces of tech in probably the entire run of Yu-Gi-Oh, no matter what series we're talking about. Here's hoping we get a Signal Synchron in the near future, because I'll be sold on that right from the word go. Part 3. Junk. These monsters are a lot more in line with Yusei's ideology on dueling. Growing up in Satellite, you had to make do with the refuse cast off by the upper class. But not only was this mindset necessary from a utilitarian standpoint, the fight for survival also showed people's true colors and potential. As such, Yusei made it a point to embody that spirit by using as many junk cards as possible, piecing together their disparate effects to make something great, all while giving those who look down on cards for their apparent weakness or uselessness a thrashing. Like with previous sections, there are some cards we'll be skipping over here. Junk Rebo and Junk Puppet have been covered in videos that are more closely tied to their archetypes. Same with Junk Box, though we haven't done Morphtronic explained yet. And while Machine Assembly Line makes Junk Counters, it's really more like generic machine support. You'll also want to check out previous sections to see the iconic Junk Synchron, Warrior, and other associated Junk Support cards that were more appropriate for other categories. Got it? Good. Junk Anchor is a level 2 Earth Warrior tuner monster with zero attack and defense, and can substitute a Synchron tuner needed for a Synchro Summon. And once per turn, you can discard a card, then target a non-tuner junk monster in your grave, special summon that target, and if you do, immediately after this effect resolves, Synchro Summon a Synchro monster that lists a Synchron monster as a tuner, using only this card and the card you summon, and these Synchro materials are banished instead of being sent to the grave. Basically, anything that Quick Draw can be used for, Junk Anchor can make with its effect, though you are able to use it as a regular tuner without the effect to use it for any synchro monster. It's a shame all the materials get banished after you use this effect, but at least whatever you can make can help anchor your board. Junk Blader is a level 4 Earth Warrior monster with 1800 attack and 1000 defense, and you can banish a junk monster from your grave to have Blader gain 400 attack until the end of the turn. And that's not once per turn, so if you need Blader to get beefy, well... You know what they say, the graveyard is a resource. Just don't tell me, uh, how banishing monsters into the eternal void causes your sword to get stronger. I've got a feeling I won't like it. Junk Breaker is a level 4 Earth Warrior monster with 1800 attack and 1000 defense, and during your main phase, if this card was normal summon this turn, you can tribute this card, and all phase up monsters on the field have their effects negated until the end of the turn. Oh wow, a Dark Ruler No More that you have to spend your normal summon on, and that can be responded to, and negates your own cards? I guess the upside is that it doesn't shut off damage, but I'm gonna take a wild guess here and say that's not really gonna tip the balance of usability. Heck, you can't even special summon it from the grave to get the effect, because it specifically has to be normal summoned to use it! It's kinda lame, but I guess it was necessary to keep from breaking the game. 
Junk Changer is a level 3 Earth Warrior Tuner monster with 1500 attack and 900 defense. And if normal or special summoned, you can target a junk monster on the field, then either increase or decrease its level by 1. And since nothing keeps it from targeting itself, this means Changer can act as a level 2 or 4 tuner as well, making it very flexible. It also doesn't go away at the end of the turn, which I doubt will have much of an impact, but since it doesn't place a restriction on the kinds of summons you can make after the effect is activated, you could also modulate its levels for Xyz summon. But whatever you use it for, you better do it quick. Whatever genius designed this card put the big red weak point button right in front, so they aren't lasting very long. Junk Collector is a level 5 light warrior monster with 1000 attack and 2200 defense. And as a quick effect, you can banish this card from the field and a normal trap in your grave to apply that trap's effect. The activation timing must be correct, but you don't have to pay any costs. Now, there are some on-brand traps we can use, like Urgent Tuning, but since it works on any normal trap, you can double dip on cards like Artifact Sanctum, Infinite Impermanence, and Bottomless Trap Hole. And because you bypass cost, you can play some pretty neat cards like Appoint of the Red Lotus, Burst Rebirth, or any of the Virus cards. It's just a... real shame that it's stapled onto a level 5 monster, so you're gonna have to find some combo to deploy them before you can make the most of them. It might take a bit of investment, but if you want something cool, you'll have to go out on a limb. No, seriously, why are they collecting so many body parts? I'm very concerned! Junk Converter is a level 2 Earth Warrior monster with 400 attack and 200 defense, and you can discard this card and any tuner to add a Synchron monster from your deck to your hand. And if this card is sent to the grave as Synchro material, you can target a tuner monster in your grave and special summon it in defense position, but it can't activate its effects. Now, this card has a lot of moving parts on it, so on the surface, it's kinda hard to see how to best use it, but it works super well with a particular Synchron of the Junk variety. By pitching Converter and any tuner, you add Junk Synchron to your hand, and once you normal summon them, you can use its effect to summon Converter. Make a level 5 Synchro of your choice, then use Converter's effect to summon back Junk Synchron, chain blocking whatever level 5 you summon, which you can then pair with your level 5 to make it a level 8 Synchro. Now, there aren't a lot of level 5 Synchros that can net you advantage before you cash in, but you don't need a lot if you have something like Junk Speeder. But if you're running the Rose Dragons, then Garden Rose Maiden is a great alternative to Junk Warrior, before you sync up into your level 8. And since your non-tuner material is a Synchro, then Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon is fair game, which you can revive with Garden Rose Maiden if it ever gets sent to the grave. So you could say this card's really good at taking your game plan and upscaling it. Junk Defender is a level 3 Earth Warrior monster with 500 attack and 1800 defense, and when an opponent's monster declares a direct attack, you can special summon this card from your hand. And once per turn, during either player's turn, you can have this card gain 300 defense until the end of the turn. Which... makes you wonder why it doesn't just have 2100 defense? Heck, at least if it was continuous, it wouldn't be vulnerable to activated effect negation. It's cool that it can block direct attacks when you need it, but that's not doing very much to defend its case. Junk Forward is a level 3 Earth Warrior monster with 900 attack and 1500 defense. And if you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. Boy howdy was this card an event! Every warrior combo deck worth its salt was clamoring for this card purely because it was a free warrior you could use to make Esol. Or if you were a level 3 deck, this makes for great Xyz material. Oh, and... Yeah, I guess you could also use it as Synchro Material, sure, but hey, diversifying your extra deck portfolio is just good forward thinking. Junk Giant is a level 6 Earth Machine monster with 2000 attack and 2400 defense, and if your opponent controls a level 5 or higher monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. Not once per turn, by the way. A Synchro Summon using this card as material can't be negated, and if a player Synchro Summons using this card as material, the other player can't activate cards or effects when that monster is Synchro Summoned. This makes Giant the magical meltdown of Synchro Summons, so your opponent doesn't get to throw a Solemn at it, nor can they activate any on summon trigger effects. It also means any on summon effects of your synchros, as well as anything you activate during that summon window, are completely safe. You know, sometimes I wonder why Junk Giant doesn't see more play, but then I remember that half the extra deck monsters in the game don't even have levels, which is a giant pain. Junk Servant is a level 4 Earth Warrior monster with 1500 attack and 1000 defense, and if you control a Junk monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. Not a lot to add here, this card pairs very well with almost anything. Junk Tuner, level 4 Junk Non-Tuners, if you've got another Junk monster on field, this monster's here to help serve up a beat down. 
Alright, now it's time to see what the extra deck can do for Junks. Junk Archer is a level 7 Earth Warrior Synchro monster with 2300 attack and 2000 defense, requiring Junk Synchron and one or more non-tuner monsters as material. Once per turn, you can target a monster your opponent controls and banish it, and during the end phase of that turn, return it to your opponent's side of the field in the same battle position. So if you're familiar with Farfa, Junk Archer is basically a repeatable version of it, and while temporary removal may seem underwhelming, the experienced among you will know how terrifying this can be. Taking a monster out of combat means it can no longer block direct attacks, activate any effects, and if it needed to be in the extra monster zone, especially Link monsters, it'll be a lot less effective when it comes back. Which is pretty thematic, considering Archer knows a thing or two about arrows. Junk Berserker is a level 7 Wind Warrior Synchro monster with 2700 attack and 1800 defense, requiring Junk Synchron and one or more non-tuner monsters as material, and it can banish a Junk monster from your grave, then target a face-up monster your opponent controls, and it loses attack equal to the banished monster's attack. And at the start of the damage step, if this card attacks a defense position monster, destroy that monster. So if something has a bigger attack than Berserker, you can make it smaller. If something has a defense Berserker can't get over, whether by having a bigger number, or having battle protection, don't worry about it. But I've gotta say, aside from the jagged looking axe, this is about the least junk looking monster I've seen so far. It looks a lot more like an Insector if you ask me. A Berserker, if you will. Junk Destroyer is a level 8 Earth Warrior Synchro Monster with 2600 attack and 2500 defense, requiring Junk Synchron and one or more non-tuner monsters as material. And when this card is Synchro Summoned, you can target cards on the field up to the number of non-tuner monsters used for this card's Synchro Summon and destroy those targets. I really dig this card because it lets you convert bodies into removal, and it can hit anything. So the more monsters you can bring to bear, the more problems you can solve. It's a bit of a brute force solution, granted, but if they didn't want us to punch through all our obstacles, they wouldn't have given us four arms. Junk Gardener is a level 6 Earth Warrior Synchro Monster with 1400 attack and 2600 defense, requiring Junk Synchron and one or more non-tuner monsters as material. Once per turn, as a quick effect, you can select a monster your opponent controls and change its battle position. And if this card is sent from the field to the grave, you can select a monster on the field and change its battle position. So unless you're dealing with a Link monster, Gardener can blank an attack each turn while also putting an opponent's monster in the best position to be attacked. And if Gardena gets run over, you can get one last up yours and blank another attack. Or if used as material for something, hey, when are we getting the rest of those Gardena cards? I'm so curious what the payoff for all this is going to be. Now, this is probably the spiciest monster we've talked about so far. Junk Speeder is a level 5 Wind Warrior Synchro monster with 1800 attack and 1000 defense, requiring any Synchron Tuner monster and one or more non-tuner monsters as material. If Synchro Summoned, you can Special Summon as many Synchron Tuners as possible with different levels from your deck in defense position, but you can't Special Summon monsters from the extra deck except Synchro monsters the turn you activate this effect, before or after you use this effect. And when an attack is declared in Involving this Synchro Summoned card that turn it with Synchro Summoned and another monster, you can make this card's attack become double its original attack until the end of the turn. So Speed Warrior had something of a glow up, huh? This released opposite Nebula Neos as part of the 2018 Megatons as new, powerful monsters for Yusei and Jaden, and while Nebula Neos was a powerful payoff, Junk Speeder is an incredible starter. Not when it came out, obviously. Master Rule 4 was in full swing, so the Synchro only requirement was difficult to work around. But now, with Synchros being fully unlocked, you could pull off combos that could fill a whole video by itself, enabling such wonders, the likes of which have ne'er been seen before. And if all else fails, you can swing out with a 3600 attack junk speeder to really kick some butt. And running counter to speeder, we have a Link monster. Junk Connector is a Link 2 Dark Warrior Link monster with 1700 attack, requiring two warrior and or machine effect monsters, including at least one tuner. So it's slightly more specific than Halk of Ibrax. And once per turn as a quick effect during either player's main or battle phase, you can, immediately after this effect resolves, Synchro Summon a Synchro monster using only materials this card points to. So it's like a Formula Synchron by proxy, but not only can you do this during both players' main phases, but during both players' battle phases as well. 
so you can attack with the material monsters before sinking into a third for even more damage. And if this Link Summoned card you control is destroyed by battle or opponent's card effect and sent to the grave, you can special summon a Junk Synchro monster from your extra deck, and it is treated as a Synchro Summon. Destroyer and Berserker may not be terribly effective, but Junk Warrior will trigger, so if you have some level 2s lying around, you can get a huge boost. But the best option is probably going to be Junk Speeder, because you can just fill your board with blockers if it gets blasted on your opponent's turn, and any that survive can help you build up a powerful boss monster when it swings back around to your turn. And even beyond what it can do mechanically, I just love its little poofy jet pantaloons. What do those even do? We've also got a few spells and traps to talk about. Junk Barrage is an equipped spell that, when the equipped monster destroys a monster by battle and sends it to the grave, burns your opponent for half the attack the destroyed monster has in the grave. Oh hey Mighty Warrior, we just got done talking about ya! In fact, if you equip this to Mighty Warrior, you can burn for the full value of the target's attack. Though it doesn't give the equipped monster any kind of bonus to help with punching above their weight class. Not to mention the mess that's gonna be left behind once this triggers. Who's gonna clean up all this junk that fell out of the sky. Starlight Junction is a field spell that lets you tribute a tuner monster to special summon a Synchron monster from your deck with a different level than the tributed monster had on the field. And during your opponent's turn, if you special summon a Synchro monster from your extra deck, you can target a card on the field and shuffle it into the deck. So this lets you convert your tuners into more appropriate Synchrons that match your current setup, and rewards you for pulling off Synchro summons on your opponent's turn by getting to shuffle away a card, though... Was it too much to ask that it doesn't target? Erebus gets to do it like it's nothing, and they don't have to target, but we have to worry about the effect whiffing, thanks to chainable effects, after we have to go through all the effort of Excel Synchro Summoning. That's highway robbery right there. Junk Sleep is a continuous trap that triggers when your opponent normal or special summons any number of monsters. Junk Sleep then changes all face-down defense position monsters you control to face-up attack position, and during the end phase, you can change all monsters you currently control to face-down defense position. Um, not sure why this is in the junk section. We don't have any cards that synergize with this, but it's a massive boon to flip decks, helping to give them some level of quick effect activation and reset without losing out on card economy. A fun fact, this also shows up in the wind-up secret pack in Master Duel, and it kind of makes sense, because when they get flipped back up, they can use all their effects again. But since this has nothing to do with our current topic, I sleep. Part 4. Scrap Iron. This small series of trap cards is junk adjacent in terms of aesthetic, but doesn't really have any relation outside of being used by Yusei. Scrap Iron Scarecrow is a normal trap that activates when your opponent's monster declares an attack. You target the attacking monster, negate the attack, also after that, set this card face down instead of sending it to the grave. This card has been, and continues to have the potential to be, very annoying. You just pick a monster every turn and blink its attacks. So if your opponent has an empty monster lineup and you have one monster, they're still safe from attacks. Do they have a monster that only one of yours can get over? Then it's still safe. It's so easy, you don't even need a brain to use it. Scrap Iron Statue is a normal trap that you can activate in response to the activation of an opponent's spell or trap card's effect that's already face up on the field and destroy it. And after that, set this card face down instead of sending it to the grave. And if this card is sent to the grave, you can target a junk monster in your grave and special summon it in defense position. Well, 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 Fateful Adventure, how are you doing today? Yes, that's right, we've got a pseudo ghost ogre that can pop not only pesky continuous spells, but also field spells, equip spells, continuous traps, pendulum spells, and I'm sure some manner of other outliers that have slipped my mind. And if your opponent tries to out it, then you get a free monster reborn for your troubles. And I've gotta say, that rendering of Stardust Dragon is impeccable. It's outstanding what you can accomplish with a yard full of scrap and a couple of viewings of the Iron Giant. Our last card for this section is Scrap Iron Signal, a counter trap that you can activate in response to your opponent's monster effect activations if you control a synchro monster that lists a synchro monster as material to negate the activation, then set this card face down instead of sending it to the grave. You don't get to destroy the card, but I guess that's the cost of having an infinitely regenerating counter trap. It's a little hard to use since you have to control an Excel synchro monster, but on the flip side, it helps make sure your investment stays safe from the errant Nibiru or other negation bodies. And it doesn't have to be a synchro summoned synchro monster that lists a synchro monster as material, so if you can revive any monsters that fit the bill if you lose them, then your signal will have the green light. Part 5. That drawer in everyone's kitchen that everyone seems to have that's full of odds and ends. 
even with all the categories set up so far, there are still several cards you say played that don't fit into them. So before we move on to the big finale, let's cover those little critters. Clear Effector is a level 2 light spellcaster monster with 0 attack and 900 defense, and if this card is sent to the grave as synchro material, you draw a card, and a synchro monster that uses this card as synchro material can't be destroyed by card effects. Goodness gracious, most cards are made out of cardboard, but this one's made out of value. It's one of the best targets for Junk Synchron, letting you convert its plus one into a draw while making sure Pesky Destruction doesn't pick off the monster you invested in. Any deck that can use this should. That's clear to see. Debris Dragon is a level 4 Wind Dragon Tuner monster with 1000 attack and 2000 defense. When this card is normal summoned, you can target a monster with 500 or less attack in your grave and special summon that target in attack position, but its effects are negated. Debris Dragon can't be used as synchro material except for the synchro summon of a dragon monster, and the other synchro materials can't be level 4. Ah, a staple of the Dandy Warrior format, being probably the best normal summon you could get. And Dandelion was the best target for it. It had low enough attack to be summoned, and when synced away with Debris Dragon, you got those two tokens. And while it would destroy those tokens, Black Rose Dragon was an incredible option to clear the entire field, or you could summon Ancient Fairy Dragon to summon another monster out of your hand, or gain a couple extra life points while getting rid of a field spell. But I guess it was Stardust Dragon they were worried you'd have easy access to, since you can't use another level 4. You know, if it can't sink for Stardust, why'd they make it look like Stardust? That confused the heck out of me as a kid. Effect Veiler is a level 1 light spellcaster tuner monster with 0 attack and defense. During your opponent's main phase, as a quick effect, you can send this card from your hand to the grave, then target an effect monster your opponent controls, and negate the effects of that face-up monster your opponent controls until the end of this turn. You say is just a magnet for super powerful cards, huh? Effect Veiler has been a competitive format staple since its release, and is one of the first truly effective hand traps in the game giving players going second a chance to interact instead of having to watch the first turn player combo off without interruption. And if that wasn't enough, it's also a tuner. So if you're in a rut and you need access to your extra deck, this little fella can be your guardian angel. Level Eater is a level 1 dark insect monster with 600 attack and 0 defense, and while in the grave, you can target a level 5 or higher monster you control, reduce its level by 1, and if you do, special summon this card. And while on the field, this card can't be tributed except for a tribute summon, which is kind of the opposite of the usual restriction. Normally, they never want you to tribute these cards except for a cost. But eh, I'm not complaining. Well, I, I guess I am a bit. Because this card lacks any hard once per turn restrictions, essentially erases the barrier of entry for any synchro that requires two or more non-tuners, and just generates free material, of course it got banned! What did you expect? I feel for anyone who might have bought high rarity versions of this card to play in tournaments, because now they'll just have to eat the cost. Necro Defender is a level 2 Dark Fiend monster with 0 attack and 800 defense, and during your main phase, you can banish this card from your grave to select a monster you control, and until your opponent's next end phase, that monster can be destroyed by a battle, and you take no battle damage from battles involving it. So it's like Shield Warrior, but longer lasting, if not as quick acting, and was integral for closing out Yusei's duel against Antinomy, acting as a key piece in a super complicated combo to burn the time-traveling Turbo Duelist out of the game. But seriously, why the fiends out of nowhere? The aesthetic consistency of Yusei's deck is out of whack. Quillbolt Hedgehog is a level 2 Earth Machine monster with 800 attack and defense, and if in the grave, you can special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. But you must control a tuner monster to activate and resolve this effect. Hey, two free levels for synchro summoning, what's not to love? That even means you can summon them back with Junk Synchron without having to banish them. And if you synchro for a synchro tuner like Excel Synchron, then this little bundle of joy can help you climb the ladder into a level 7. Honestly, considering how much it crops up in the anime and how recognizable it is, how have we not gotten a Quillbolt archetype yet? They'd be so cute! Shield Wing is a level 2 Wind Winged Beast monster with 0 attack and 900 defense, and twice per turn, this card can't be destroyed by battle. This card was used rather frequently by Yusei as a card that can just stick around on the field long enough to be used as synchro material, and because it's level 2, makes a solid target for Junk Synchron. Also, is it just me, or does Shield Wing look a bit too much like Marvel's Soren? Hmm. 
feel like a big meme is coming on. Sonic Chick is a level 1 Earth Winged Beast monster with 300 attack and defense, and can be destroyed by battle with monsters that have 1900 or more attack. Now, this is some interesting design space, making it so smaller monsters can actually block ridiculously huge ones, and we've seen it used in the past. Obnoxious Celtic Guard, for instance, has the same effect, and because of that, it's almost across the board the superior card. But does it have access to Scrambled Egg, a normal trap that you can activate if a monster you control is destroyed by battle or card effect and sent to the grave to special summon Sonic Chick from your hand deck or grave? I thought not. Now no Onslaught can pierce your defenses, because you now have a tiny pink bird to defend you. Tuning Wear is a level 1 light machine monster with 100 attack and 300 defense that can be treated as a level 2 monster for the purposes of synchro summoning. And if this card is sent to the grave for a synchro summon, you draw a card. This is unfortunately a mandatory effect, so you won't be able to chain block any optional on summon effects of your synchros, but much like Clear Effector, it refunds you with an immediate draw. And while you can't modulate its levels if its effects are negated, it is an amazing target for machine duplication. So you'll have 3 to 6 levels worth of non-tuners to work with, and you get the draw for each one since there's no hard once per turn limit. So with this card, making the tuner you want cheaply and effectively is a walk in the park. Turbo Booster is a level 1 Earth Machine monster with 0 attack and defense, and if you normal summon a card this turn, you can special summon this card from your hand, and you can tribute this card to destroy a monster your opponent controls that battled one of your monsters this turn. This was actually a really interesting monster, as it let you make a 2 for 1 trade on monsters you had trouble getting rid of, and if you're trying to get over a monster that can't be destroyed by battle, then it's an even better trade because it's probably only going to be a 1 for 1, but nowadays I wouldn't be surprised if it got added in to some kind of Link Spam Chain or something. Oh, and for the record, while Rally gave you save this card to use, they did not lend out Turbo Rocket or Cannon, so they will not be making appearances further on down the list. Besides, we're already full up on our Turbo quota, we're not looking for any more. Limit Overdrive is a quick play spell that has you returning a Tuner Synchro Monster and a non-Tuner Synchro Monster you control to the extra deck to special summon a Synchro Monster from your extra deck that has a level equal to the combined levels the two monsters had on the field, ignoring summoning conditions. This is supremely helpful when making cards like Cosmic Blazar Dragon, as they require a minimum of three monsters, and they all have to be Synchros. This can also work with Shooting Quasar Dragon, though since the summon isn't treated as a Synchro summon, the monsters you shuffle back aren't treated as Synchro material, so the attack effect isn't going to work very well. And while it's most helpful in making these Delta Excel Synchro monsters, it's not limited to only making those. Technically, you can make any Synchro monster that matches the level of what you shuffle back. Now, most Synchro tuners can already Synchro at quick effect speed, so it's not too wild that Limit Overdrive is a quick play spell, but normally those only work during your opponent's turn. Limit Overdrive, on the other hand, can pull an El Shadal Fusion, activating in the middle of the battle phase to cause some real havoc, leading your opponent to a big game overdrive. One for One is a normal spell that has you sending a monster from your hand to the grave to special summon a level 1 monster from your hand or deck. Wow, another competitive powerhouse coming out of Yusei's arsenal. That man does not play around. Anytime a level 1 monster enters the format, it's always that much more powerful by virtue of being able to summon it off of the help of this simple spell card. Bonus points for if you're playing a deck that loves sending monster cards to the grave, because now you've got an additional outlet for those triggers. Unfortunately, it's a victim of its own power, having been limited on the current TCG Forbidden and Limited list for some time now. But to be fair, I can't think of a more flavorful and fitting fate for one for one than to be at one. Synchro Chase is a continuous spell that keeps your opponent from activating cards or effects in response to the effect activation of your Synchro monsters with Warrior, Synchron, or Stardust in their original names. And if you Synchro Summon any of those monsters, you can target a monster in your grave used as material for them and Special Summon it in defense position. While you can only use that effect once per turn, it essentially lets you Synchro Climb in ways never before seen, providing you with a free tuner or non-tuner to complement whatever type of Synchro you summon. So not only can this keep your monster from being striked, impermed, or veilered, it can help you chase down your game-winning plans. 
Confusion Chaff is a normal trap that can only activate when your opponent declares a second direct attack during the same battle phase. On resolution, you conduct battle between the attacking monster and the first monster that attacked directly, and other effects can't be activated during that battle. Okay, I'm calling it now, this is the most anime of the cards we've talked about so far. It's situational, it's unwieldy, and it brings up a rules interaction that almost never comes up. So yeah, Confusion Chaff is a pretty apt name. I'm confused why they made it, and I'm sure it confused a lot of people on Resolution. Equip Shot is a normal trap that can only be activated in the battle phase. You select an equipped card equipped to a face-up attack position monster you control, and select a face-up attack position monster your opponent controls, and equip your opponent's monster with that equipped card. Then, conduct battle between your monster that was unequipped, and the monster that just got equipped, and other effects can't be activated during this battle. This was used specifically in the anime to get Handcuffs Dragon off Junk Warrior, and it's about the only time I can think of that Equip Shot would be useful. I suppose Suppose there are a few equipped cards that your opponent would give to your monster to debuff them in which this would be useful, but at that point just run MST. Don't shoot yourself in the foot trying to make this card work. Give and Take is a normal trap that special summons a monster from your grave to your opponent's side of the field in defense position and increases the level of one monster you control by the level of the special summoned monster until the end phase. So it's like you get the levels, but your opponent gets everything else. In a vacuum, this card is terrible, but if you build around it, you can give your opponent a monster with a sweet on destruction effect that you can trigger when you run it over by battle, all while modulating your levels. Okay, so it's not really optimal in this day and age, but I'll give and take what I can get. Synchro Material is a normal trap that has you targeting a face-up monster your opponent controls, and you can use it as Synchro Material this turn as if you controlled it, but you can't conduct your battle phase the turn you activate this card, making it a Synchro-specific soul exchange. Except this card has the possibility of being even better, because despite its trap card status giving it a built-in delay, this means you can pair it with your quick effect Synchro Tuners like Excel, Formula, or Steam to take advantage of this on your opponent's turn, giving you a weird kind of removal and bypassing the battle phase lockout restriction. That's some good synchro material right there. Synchro Strike is a normal trap that targets a synchro summoned monster you control and gains 500 attack for each synchro material monster used for its summon until the end of the turn. So at minimum, this is going to get you a thousand attack, which isn't an insignificant power boost. Put this on anything with a multi-attack and you're going to be able to deal some major damage. But since it's not getting you actual card advantage, you're better off striking this from your deck list. Tuner's Barrier is a normal trap that has you selecting a face-up tuner monster you control, and that monster can't be destroyed by battle or card effects until the end phase of the next turn. So that's two full turns of Destruction Immunity, helping you to keep any errant tuners safe until you can fold them into a Synchro. Unless your tuner happens to be a total beast like Coral Dragon, and you want to keep it around as long as possible. But I'm really upset they went and put Water Spirit on the art, this card gives me the shivers. Dragon Knight Draco Aqueste is a level 10 Wind Dragon Fusion monster with 3200 attack and 2000 defense, requiring a Dragon Synchro monster and a Warrior monster as material, and it must first be Fusion Summoned. Once per turn, you can target a Dragon type Synchro monster in your grave and banish it, and if you do, until the end phase, this card's name becomes that monster's name, and this effect is replaced by that monster's original effect. And while this card is in attack position, your opponent takes any effect damage you would have taken from card effects. The first and only fusion monster used by Yusei Fudo, Draco Aqueste acting like a Synchro Dragon was kind of a big deal in the anime, as it would help combat the Mech Lord threat. However, in real life, it really just helped to fill out the Miracle Synchro Fusion roster, without having much of an impact. The effect damage reflection is... Nice, I suppose, as long as you're in a format where that happens a lot. Otherwise, it's a giant fusion that sometimes gets to act like a Siner Dragon. But I do have to give it props for bringing Dragoon energy into the video. Big fan. Armory Arm is a level 4 light machine synchro monster with 1800 attack and 1200 defense, requiring generic material. It operates like a union monster, letting you either equip itself to a monster or special summon it while equipped in attack position. But is it technically a union monster? 
probably because it can't be destroyed to protect the monster equipped with it, and because you can equip it to any monster, whereas unions have only been able to equip to your own monsters. While equipped to a monster by its own effect, the equipped monster gains a thousand attack, and if that monster destroys another monster by battle and sends it to the grave, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the destroyed monster's original attack. This makes for a great summon off of Junk Synchron if you summon a level 1 monster with its effect. Oh hi Tuningware, good to see you again. Not only does the equipped monster gain a huge attack boost, you'll be able to deal damage even if the monster you destroy is in defense position. Hey, so uh, there's this whole section here where I talk about how the new Hidden Arsenal reprint of this card uh, allows for the Colossal Fighter FTK to work again, and um, well that's not um... Uh, that was wrong. I uh, misinterpreted how it works. The errata uh, just functionally makes it more easy to understand, but doesn't functionally change how it works. So, um, I'm sorry for the misinformation. Uh, let's get back to the explained video already in progress. Part 6. Stardust. Here we are, the culmination of Yusei's signer power. They're on all the promo art, and has been with Yusei through some of his most impactful duels. Real quick though, we won't be covering Stardust Dragon Assault Mode, as I go into detail about it more in Assault Mode Explained, and I won't be covering Stardust on, because the less people know about this card's game warping power, the healthier Yu-Gi-Oh will be. But what we will do is start with the Guest of Honor, so we're all on the same page when it comes to its support down the road. Stardust Dragon is a level 8 Wind Dragon Synchro Monster with 2500 attack and 2000 defense, requiring generic material. When a card or effect is activated that would destroy any number of cards on the field as a quick effect, you can tribute this card to negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. And during the end phase, if this effect was activated this turn and was not negated, you can special summon this card from your grave. This card was a dynamite introduction to Synchros, countering one of the most pervasive forms of interaction to date, while also being a sizable body. It didn't stand a chance against Dark Arm Dragon in the combat department, but paired very nicely with Dad to keep it safe if the pilot was ever on the back foot, or to force Dad into combat, making it susceptible to battle tricks when it otherwise wouldn't be. While this card has pretty effectively been power crept by broader and stronger negation bodies, Stardust was something of a trendsetter, acting as a template for many extra deck boss monsters to come, even beyond Synchro, acting as a brilliant star for designers to navigate by. Now, despite being on part 6 of a two-video series, I must now inform you that you are currently listening to part 6A, where I talk about generic Stardust cards. Once that's done, we'll be covering the Majestic line in part 6B, and we'll wrap it up with part 6C, the part where Stardust goes absolutely banana pants. So let's keep going with that first part within a part by talking about Malefic Stardust Dragon, a level 8 dark dragon monster with 2500 attack and 2000 defense. It can't be normal summoned or set, and must be special summoned from your hand by banishing a Stardust Dragon from your extra deck. You can only control one face-up Malefic monster, other monsters you control can't declare an attack. If there's no face-up field spell card on the field, this card is destroyed, but face-up field spell cards can't be destroyed by effects while they're on the field, which I presume is meant to emulate based Stardust Dragon's protection. One day, we'll go more in-depth with how this affects the strategy, but as it turns out, across the entire Malefic archetype, Stardust is probably one of the most splashable. As one of the extra deck ambassadors, you don't have to worry about bricking on the base monster, and if you run a field spell reliant deck, you certainly aren't going to turn your nose up at a field barrier on legs. And at worst, it's a free special summon you can use for all kinds of additional plays. So even if your deck revolves around Stardust, it's not paradoxical to run this as well. Stardust Phantom is a level 1 light spellcaster monster with zero attack and defense, and when this card you control is destroyed by your opponent and sent to the grave, you can select a Stardust Dragon in your grave and special summon it in face-up defense position. You can also remove from play this card from your grave to select a face-up dragon-type synchro monster you control, and once per turn, that synchro monster can't be destroyed by battle, but each time this effect is applied, it loses 800 attack and defense at the end of the damage step. So this strange battle protection sticks around as long as the monster does, it just only benefits it once per turn. That's some... strange Yang Zing stuff right there. But the fact that it can float into a stranded Stardust is pretty neat, and even though the battle protection has stat reduction, it's better than outright losing the Stardust. You're just gonna have to deal with the outdated problem-solving card text because it's only ever had one printing. Probably because it ghosted all its other appearances. 
Necroid Synchro is a normal spell that banishes a tuner and up to two non-tuner monsters from your grave, and if you do, special summon a Stardust Synchro monster from your extra deck whose level equals the total level of the banished monsters, but it has its effects negated. The summon is also treated as a Synchro summon, so you won't get to benefit from any of the card's cool effects, but if you need a good starting point for your Synchro step ladder, this is a pretty good way to get started. It's also technically a Roid card, but I'm sure that'll never come up. Right? Stardust Illumination is a normal spell that sends a Stardust monster from your deck to the grave. Or if you control Stardust Dragon, or a synchro monster that lists Stardust Dragon in its text, you can special summon that monster instead. You can also banish this card from your grave, then target a Stardust monster you control and either increase or decrease its level by one. Illumination is here to set up Stardust Synchron and Trail, and the best part is that it all works even if you don't have the special summon set up. It just makes them better. And the grave effect can help adjust your levels to help make a variety of synchro monsters outside of your main roster. It also keeps making money hand over fist with all those minion movies, so it's hard to complain about it. Stardust Shimmer is a normal spell that has you selecting a dragon type synchro in your grave. You remove from play other monsters in your grave whose total levels equal the level of the selected monster and special summon it from your grave. So it's kinda like Necroid Synchro, but you don't have to have specific tuner or non-tuner combinations. And it can be any dragon synchro, so if your grave is set up with Stardust and it's a evolved forms, you'll have a lot to choose from. And considering how synchros work, you're all but guaranteed to have the right levels outside of some weird corner cases. So Stardust Shimmer can really help your grind game shine. Cosmic Flare is a quick play spell that has you targeting a Stardust Synchro monster you control, and this turn, if that Synchro monster you control battles an opponent's monster, shuffle that opponent's monster into the deck at the start of the damage step. And if a Stardust Synchro monster you control would tribute itself to activate its effect, you can banish this card from your grave instead. Now we've got Stardust Dragon's signature attack spell, and it's pretty nifty. Shuffling cards back into the deck is the most efficient way to remove them from the game without hassle. And since this triggers on general battle, this can be used for offense and defense. And if you're worried your opponent has multiple destruction effects you want Stardust to negate, or you just don't want to leave your field empty, Cosmic Flare's Grave Effect has you covered, changing up the dynamic for a breath weapon of fresh air. Converging Wishes is a normal trap that you can activate if you have five or more Dragon-type Synchro monsters with different names in your grave. You special summon a Stardust Dragon from your extra deck, which is treated as a Synchro Summon, but banish it during the end phase. That Stardust Dragon is equipped with Converging Wishes, and while equipped, it gains attack equal to the combined attack of all Dragon-type Synchros in your grave. And while equipped, when it destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can banish a Dragon-type Synchro monster from your grave, so it can attack an opponent's monster against again in a row. So if we assume those five dragons are the other Signer dragons, Red Dragon Archfiend, Black Rose Dragon, Ancient Fairy Dragon, Life Stream Dragon, and Black Winged Dragon, we've got a Stardust clocking in at 15,700 attack. Against basically any attack position monster, that's basically game. But if somehow you need to attack more monsters, you can make several more attacks. And you only have to banish the Stardust at the end of the turn. So if you find a way to use Stardust before the then, then you get all the benefits without the drawbacks. I just wish it was a spell. Stardust Flash is a normal trap that targets a Stardust monster in your grave and special summons it. It can get you back your big Synchros, or your smaller pieces like Synchron and Trail. It's a simple revival card that can get you a big monster or a plus one. Not much to expound on here, so we can finish coverage of this card in a flash. Stardust Mirage is a normal trap that you can activate if you control a level 8 or higher Dragon Synchro monster. It special summons as many monsters as possible from your grave that were destroyed and sent to the grave by battle or card effect this turn. This sounds kinda weird, like if you have a level 8 or higher Dragon Synchro, wouldn't it be Stardust? And wouldn't Stardust stop those destructions? But it can also help out if you're running any of the different forms that don't necessarily have that kind of protection, letting you rebuild your field while your opponent thinks your shields are down, because the board your opponent sees isn't what it appears. Stardust Respark is a normal trap that you can activate when your opponent's special summoned monster declares a direct attack if its attack is greater than or equal to your life points, so you literally have to be on the verge of defeat to activate this card. 
On resolution, the attack is negated, and if you do, draw a card, then you can special summon a Stardust monster from your extra deck or grave. Neat. I mean, sure, it has to be a direct attack, so if they're going to defeat you through a monster, this doesn't work, and it can't summon any Stardusts that can only be special summoned by Synchro, but uh, other than those glaring setbacks, this is the perfect card to help you spark a comeback. Starlight Road is a normal trap that you can activate in response to the activation of a card or effect that would destroy two or more cards on the field. You negate that effect, and if you do, destroy that card, then you can special summon a Stardust Dragon from your extra deck. Now, this card was heinous in its heyday. Heavy Storm couldn't be activated all willy-nilly, because if your opponent had two or more back row, you could end up on the wrong side of a devastating tempo swing. One downside was that, since the Stardust Dragon wasn't properly summoned, it couldn't revive if you used its negation effect, but sometimes the initial swing and advantage was more than enough to take the win, setting you up on the road to victory. Shooting Star is a normal trap that you can activate if a Stardust monster is on the field, and it lets you target a card on the field and destroy it. Ah, it appears the one that stood in the way of destruction has embraced it. It's a non-once-per-turn removal effect at quick effect speed, which is much better now than it's ever been thanks to the increase in main deck Stardust monsters, as normally your Synchros don't really need the help. Still though, I've got to commend their commitment to the bit. Stardust Wish is a continuous trap that, once per turn, if a Stardust Synchro monster you control is tributed to activate its own effect, except during the damage step, you can target that monster and special summon it. Your opponent can't activate cards or effects in response to this card's activation, and monsters special summoned by this effect can't be destroyed by battle while in attack position. So since Stardust Dragon doesn't have a hard once per turn, you can use Wish to summon Stardust back ahead of schedule, gain the battle destruction immunity, and negate another destruction effect if it comes up. And this isn't some kind of Call of the Haunted situation, so destroying Wish after the effect resolution just takes away the battle destruction immunity. And bonus, it looks like they're also giving away free hugs! Uh, well, it could be a bonus, it all depends on what your previous con experience might be. Shooting Riser Dragon is a level 7 Light Dragon Synchro Tuner monster with 2100 attack and 1700 defense, requiring generic material. If Synchro summoned, you can send a monster from your deck to the grave whose level is lower than this card's on the field. And if you do, reduce this card's level by that monster's, but for the rest of the turn, you can't activate the effects of monsters with the same name as the sent monster had in the grave. And once per chain, during your opponent's main phase as a quick effect, you can, immediately after this effect resolves, Synchro Summon using this card you control. Boy howdy has this card become a combo fiend. It was strong enough as it was, being a free foolish burial strapped to a quick effect Synchro Summon, but when it first came out you had to make it manually. But with the advent of Halka Fibrax, you could do everything on your opponent's turn, dropping devastating Synchro monsters out of nowhere. And if the monster sent to the grave with Riser Dragon had an effect you could use later on, it was free to do so once it looped back around to your turn. So suffice it to say, shooting Riser Dragon really raised the bar. Stardust Assault Warrior is a level 6 Wind Warrior Synchro Monster with 2100 attack and 1200 defense, requiring generic material. Though you may want to use a Junk Monster, because when it's Synchro Summoned and you control no monsters, you can target a Junk Monster in your grave and special summon it, potentially leading to a Synchro Climb Line. And on top of that, Assault Warrior also deals piercing battle damage. And with arm mounted lances like that, it better be. And take a look, they're actually really long screwdrivers, so it may not need a Synchron Tuner, but it looks like Lefty and Righty Driver helped out here. So if you need to get some damage through on a Defender, you have the option, but you're more than likely using this as a stepping stone for your next play. But hey, teamwork makes the dream work, right? Their counterpart is Stardust Charge Warrior, a level 6 Wind Warrior Synchro Monster with 2000 attack and 1300 defense, requiring generic material. When Synchro Summoned, you draw a card, and it can attack all special summoned monsters your opponent controls once each. I love that you get the draw no matter what, even if you have accompanying monsters. And while Assault Warrior can help you get through individual monsters, Charge trades damage for impact. If your opponent tries to go wide to keep their life points safe, you better believe Charge is on cleanup duty. And it's gonna get done with their bare hands too, what a chad. But arguably, their strongest form comes from the simply named Stardust Warrior, a level 10 Wind Warrior Synchro Monster with 3000 attack and 2500 defense, requiring a Synchro Tuner and one or more non-Tuner Synchro Monsters as material, making it the first Excel Synchro Monster we've talked about in You Say Explain. It doesn't mean anything in the game, mind you, but it's a nifty term from the anime that describes a monster that needs a Synchro Tuner and one or more non-Tuner Synchro Monsters as material. 
During either player's turn, if your opponent would special summon any number of monsters, you can tribute this card to negate the summon, and if you do, destroy those monsters. And during the end phase, if this effect was activated and not negated, you can special summon this card from your grave. And if this card is destroyed by battle, or if this face-up card leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, you can special summon a level 8 or lower warrior synchro monster from your extra deck, and this is treated as a proper synchro summon. Remember, it summons a Synchro with Warrior in its name, not any Warrior-type monster. So it's a bigger base Stardust Dragon that negates Inherent Summons, not Destruction Effects, and you can spit out a Drill Warrior for free if it gets got. Honestly, as far as Excel Synchros go, I'm not too impressed. These monsters take a lot of effort to make, and while negating a Pendulum, Link, Xyz, or Opposing Synchro Summon can be devastating, not being able to interact with fusions is such a blind spot. Draco Equeste would not approve. Stardust Spark Dragon is a level 8 light dragon synchro monster with 2500 attack and 2000 defense, requiring generic material. And once per turn, as a quick effect, you can target a face-up card you control, and once during that turn, it can't be destroyed by battle or card effect. So it gives a nifty little shield to any face-up card you control, whether it be a monster, spell, or trap. And while it can't stop the entire effect of a devastating Dark Hole activation, it can overcome something original Stardust can't, Battle Destruction. Unless your opponent has a supplemental effect, Stardust Dragon here can tank a blow from a big boss and keep swinging. Now, you might be asking why Stardust and Stardust Spark are different cards when they look basically the same, and that's because Spark Dragon isn't a Siner Dragon, they're a dual dragon, which are the parallels to Siner Dragons in the 5Ds manga. We touched on this a bit in Heroes Explained, but the stories between the anime and manga end up diverging wildly, but share a number of icons, the special synchro dragons being one of them for 5Ds. But like, isn't every dragon-type monster a dual dragon? Like, you use them all in duels, what's the distinction here? Part 6B, Majestic Star Dragon. Appearing as an integral piece towards the defeat of the Dark Signers, as well as helping to defeat the Mech Lord threat, Majestic Star Dragon is a level 10 Wind Dragon Synchro Monster with 3800 attack and 3000 defense, requiring Stardust Dragon, a single non-tuner, and a tuner by the name of Majestic Dragon, a level 1 Light Dragon Tuner Monster with 0 attack and defense that can't be used as Synchro material except for a Majestic Monster. So that non-tuner better be a level 1 as well. During either player's turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect, you can tribute this card to negate the activation, and if you do, destroy all cards your opponent controls. And once per turn, you can target a face-up monster your opponent controls, negate its effects until the end of this turn, and you can activate one of its effects as this card's effect once per turn. And during the end phase, you can target a Stardust Dragon in your grave, returning this card from the field to the extra deck, and special summon that target, um... Oh, wow, I guess we can see why this never really caught on, huh? To be fair, other than that, this card is wild. Massive attack stat, an Omni Negate that board wipes, and it can take your opponent's monster's effects, but... Yeah, the whole leaving at the end of the turn thing, combined with the ridiculous synchro requirements is... Kind of an insult, not gonna lie. Like, are you expected to win right then and there? This card looks majestic, but it doesn't feel majestic. Thankfully, there's some relief when it comes to this card's Synchro Summon in the form of an easily summonable non-tuner material. Stardust Jowlong is a level 1 Light Dragon monster with 100 attack and defense, and when you Synchro Summon Stardust Dragon, you can special summon this card from your grave in face-up attack position. And once per turn, if this card would be destroyed by battle, it is not. This card can be sent to the grave with Illumination, or any foolish effect really, and once it's there, you can just set it and forget it. Honestly, kinda wondering why they even bothered printing the Battle Destruction Protection effect, because if you aren't going into Majestic right then and there, then I think you might have sleeved up the wrong card. But thankfully, the core set Dawn of Majesty... Eh? Majesty? Majestic? Anyway, the core set Dawn of Majesty released with a bevy of cards meant to update and bolster this play sequence, and the first step to that was making a replacement for Majestic Dragon. Converging Will's Dragon is a level 1 light dragon tuner monster with zero attack and defense, whose name becomes Majestic Dragon while on the field or in the grave, and also can't be used as synchro material except for a Majestic Synchro monster. 
When you draw this card, you can reveal it to special summon it from your hand. Then if you control a level 8 or higher dragon synchro monster, you can special summon one level 1 dragon monster from your deck. This means you can summon that Stardust Zhao Long to get those 10 levels put together, or you could grab any level 1 dragon that has an effect worth using. Omni Dragon Brotar, for instance, can trade a card in your hand for a light dragon if you target Converging Wills, or a dark dragon if you target itself. Stardust Worm, a card we'll get into later, is a great first target, and if you want to be a real stinker, Black Metal Dragon is a great second target. Because the last thing they'll suspect from the Stardust Synchro player is the Red Eyes Fusion. There's also a whole new version of this boss, Shooting Majestic Star Dragon, a level 11 Wind Dragon Synchro Monster with 4000 attack and 3300 defense, requiring Majestic Dragon and one or more non-tuner monsters, including a Dragon Synchro Monster as material. So it's one level higher, but allows for much more flexibility with the Synchro materials. It must first be Synchro Summoned, and once per turn, you can negate the effects of an effect monster your opponent controls. And it doesn't even target! Shooting Majestic can make an additional attack each battle phase for every monster in your grave that's a Stardust Dragon or a Synchro Monster with Stardust Dragon in its text. And once per turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect, you can banish this card until the end phase, and if you do, negate the activation, and if you do that, banish that card. So not only is it Nomni Negate, but it has better removal in the form of banishing, and it's not a tribute then special summon again at the end of the turn, rather it's a temporary banish like the one with Junk Archer. This makes it less vulnerable to on-summon triggers or the stray summon limit. Though, hilariously, since the banishing is part of the effect, we can get impermed or Veilered in response, which is kind of funny. The multi-attack on a 4000 body ain't bad either, especially since these attacks can be direct attacks, something you have to look out for with effects like these. And tying it all together is the fact that as long as you have Illumination in Grave to make up for the extra level, any setup that makes Base Majestic can make this as well. This card's Omni Negate may not be a board wipe, but we don't disappear at the end of the turn, so who really comes out on top? Stardust Trail is a level 4 light dragon monster with 500 attack and 2000 defense that you can special summon from your hand or grave if a monster you control is tributed, except during the damage step, but this card is banished if it leaves the field. And if this card is used to synchro summon a warrior, synchron, or stardust synchro monster, you can special summon a stardust token, which is a level 1 light dragon monster with 0 attack and defense. So this triggers either when you activate stardust dragon's effect or the summoning effect of stardust synchron. And it's absolutely amazing with the latter, because you can immediately make Stardust, giving you a token to help Synchro summon Majestic, making them an excellent trail blazer towards your end goal. Stardust Worm is a level 1 light dragon monster with 0 attack and defense, and if this card is in your hand or grave and you control a level 8 or higher dragon synchro monster, you can special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. You can also tribute this card to special summon up to 2 level 1 light dragon monsters from your hand and or grave, except a copy of itself, but they can't activate their effects. While not released in Dawn of Majesty, this is clearly meant to help with the summon of your majestic synchros, as it can summon either form of majestic dragon and the level 1 light dragon to complete the set. This does necessitate the usage of Stardust Jowlong though, as the non-tuner level 1 light dragon pool is shared between it and Galaxy Eyes Cloud Dragon. Though hilariously, you could use this in another big Synchro Dragon deck, Blue Eyes. Azure Eyes and Spirit Dragon both have the stats for Worm to special summon themselves, and both White Stone of Legends and Ancients fit the bill for the summoning effect. Dang, now all I want is a Yusei vs Kaiba Live Duel. Oh, I miss World Qualifiers. Arrive in Light is a continuous spell that, when activated, lets you place a level 1 dragon monster from your hand or deck on top of your deck. While on the field, neither player can return Stardust Dragon, or a synchro monster that lists Stardust Dragon in its text, from the field to the extra deck. And if a synchro monster is synchro summoned, you can apply one of the following effects, but you can't apply the same one multiple times in the same turn. You can either draw a card, or special summon a tuner from your hand. So you can place Converging Wills Dragon on top of your deck, then Synchro Summon whatever you please. This has you drawing Converging Wills, triggering all of its effects, ending on at least Base Form Majestic, which now won't have to return to the extra deck at the end of the turn. It's an incredibly cool card, but way to snub Majestic Red Dragon there. All the other pieces of Majestic support help out Jack Atlas's version, why'd you have to be a jerk and make him feel left out? 
Majestic Absorption is a normal spell that has you targeting a Stardust Dragon or a Synchro that lists Stardust Dragon in its text that you control, then activating one of the following effects. Equip a face-up monster your opponent controls to this card. It can attack directly this turn, or this turn each time the targeted monster destroys a monster by battle, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the destroyed monster's original attack. These all seem pretty random, but they're all references to different times Majestic Star Dragon used its effect stealing ability in the anime. The first one emulates the Mech Lord's ability to equip Synchro Monsters, the second emulates the Earthbound Immortals in general, and the third one emulates specifically Kokopakapu's burn effect. Each effect is pretty cool, and I struggle to think of a time in which all three of them aren't useful. And if you're having a hard time getting your hands on a copy, just sleeve up an Uno Reverse card, it's basically the same thing. Majestic Mirage is a continuous trap that, like Arrive in Light, has multiple effects with the same trigger, but you cannot use the same one multiple times in the same turn. That trigger is whenever a Stardust Dragon, or Synchro Monster that lists Stardust Dragon in its text, leaves the field by its own effect, or to activate their own effect. Majestic Mirage can special summon one of those monsters, banish a monster from your opponent's field or grave, or make it so any damage you take for the rest of the turn is halved. These effects can be backbreaking, because when the first effect is used with our Majestics, you're getting back another Omni Negate, which can be used again because there's no hard once per turn on them. And if you use it a second second time, then you've got a non-targeting banish ready to go. Forget thinking twice, your opponent's gonna have to think thrice before they can make a move against this card. Part 6C, Clear Mind. NRD, the power generated by the force of synchro summoning, isn't just an energy field, but a thinking, feeling entity, and responds to the emotions of the user, working best when they rid themselves of all negativity so that their mind is focused only on the duel. And it's in this state of clear mind that Excel Synchro Summoning becomes possible. In this section, we'll explore all the forms both Stardust Dragon and Stardust Spark Dragon have evolved into over the years. In fact, what better way to kick this list off than a new card that's here to help elevate our dueling spirit? Excel Synchro Stardust Dragon is a level 8 wind Dragon Synchro Monster with 2500 attack and 2000 defense, requiring generic material. If this card is Synchro Summoned, you can special summon a level 2 or lower tuner from your grave, and during any main phase as a quick effect, you can tribute this card to special summon a Stardust Dragon from your extra deck, which is treated as a Synchro Summon, then immediately after this effect resolves, Synchro Summon any Synchro Monster using monsters you control as material. And this turn, the monsters Synchro Summoned by this effect are unaffected by your opponent's activated effects. So if you have, say, Formula Synchron in your grave, you can revive that, and then you can make a level 10 Synchro that can't be affected by your opponent's cards. And boy howdy does that not sound like the best Baron de Fleur you've ever made in your life. I mean, sure, you can use it to make more thematically appropriate monsters, Stardust Warrior comes to mind, but let's keep an open mind along with our clear mind, huh? Stardust Chronicle Spark Dragon is a level 10 Light Dragon Synchro Monster with 3000 attack and 2500 defense, requiring a Tuner Synchro and one or more non-Tuner Synchro monsters as material, and must be Synchro Summoned. Once per turn, as a quick effect, you can banish a Synchro Monster from your grave, and this card becomes unaffected by other cards' effects for the rest of the turn. And if this card in its owner's possession is destroyed by an opponent's card, you can target one of your banished Dragon Synchro Monsters and Special Summon it. This is Stardust Dragon's Excel Synchro form in the manga, and it's a tough nut to crack. Being unaffected by card effects is one of the best protections you can ever get, and Chronicle can put up shields for at least two turns. And if it does get destroyed, you can get one of those banished monsters back. It's an incredible powerhouse, and ridiculously fashionable. You know, when Frieza starts taking your drip, you know you've made it. Shooting Star Dragon is a level 10 Wind Dragon Synchro Monster with 3300 attack and 2500 defense, requiring a Tuner Synchro Monster and Stardust Dragon as material. Once per turn, you can excavate the top 5 cards of your deck, and shooting Star Dragon's maximum number of attacks per battle phase this turn equals the number of tuners excavated. Also shuffle the excavated cards back into your deck. Once per turn, during either player's turn, when a card or effect is activated that would destroy any number of cards on the field, you can negate that effect. And if you do, destroy it. And once per turn, when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can target the attacking monster, banish this card, and if you do, negate that attack. And during the next end phase, special summon this card banished by this effect. This is the Excel Synchro version you're all probably more familiar with. 
It also lends some of its power to another retrain we've talked about so far, shooting Majestic Star Dragon, contributing a form of its multi-attack. This form maintains Stardust Dragon's effect destruction negation, but doesn't tribute itself for that. That's been moved to its attack negation effect, which can help it from getting run over by a bigger monster, or just keeping another one of your monsters safe. So it makes for a great anchor to keep your board safe from a variety of angles. Its multi-attack function is pretty risky, as flipping over zero tuners means it can't attack, and it's gotten even more risky as decks have gotten better at yanking tuners out of their deck so they don't become bricks. But even flipping just two tuners gives you 6,600 points of damage to work with. And if you really shoot for the stars and manage to flip five tuners, you basically end the game right there. Shooting Star Dragon TGX is a level 10 Wind Dragon Synchro Monster with 3300 attack and 2500 defense, requiring a Tuner Synchro Monster and one or more non-Tuner Synchro Monsters as material. When a monster effect is activated that targets any number of monsters you control as a quick effect, you can banish a Tuner from your grave to negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. Notably, this isn't once per turn, so as long as you have tuners in Grave, you can counter targeted monster effects on your monsters. However, these next two are once per turn. You can negate an attack from an opponent's monster on Declaration, and during your opponent's turn, if this card is in your Grave as a quick effect, you can tribute two Synchro monsters to special summon this card. This card was part of a series that combined the ace monsters of a variety of protagonists across the series with important companion characters. You're probably painfully familiar with one of those additions, Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. In this instance, Shooting Star Dragon takes on the characteristics of Bruno's TG monsters, taking a form of its negation ability while keeping its attack negation, all wrapped up in an effect that lets you trade two synchros to put it back onto the field. And honestly, I can't think of a better person to update the Stardust roster than the person who taught you say how to achieve a whole new level of clear mind. I'm gonna avoid specific spoilers here, but... Look, I'm not crying, you're crying! And as it turns out, we're gonna need those lessons for these last few cards, as we're dabbling into the realm of Delta Excel Synchros, monsters that require a Synchro Tuner and at least two non-Tuner Synchros. It's time to blast forward with Top Clear Mind! Stardust Cipher Divine Dragon is a level 12 Light Dragon Synchro Monster with 4,000 attack and defense, requiring a Tuner Synchro and two or more non-Tuner Synchros as material, and must be Synchro Summoned. The first time each card you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect, it is not. And once per turn, during either player's turn, when your opponent activates a monster effect, you can just negate it, and if you do, destroy a card on the field. You can also banish this card from your grave, then target a level 8 or lower Stardust monster in your grave and special summon it. So this is kind of like a super Dingirsu, giving everything a free layer of protection each turn to keep your board safe. And it can direct its negation destruction to any card on the field. So if the source of that monster effect is inconsequential, you can just pop something else. It's like you're guiding the forces of destruction away from you and towards your desired target. It's so nutty. And if your opponent ends up sending Cipher to the grave, you can just Monster Reborn Base Stardust Dragon, or any other appropriate Stardust monster, to get you back in the game. It may not have the attribute for it, but this Stardust is simply divine. Cosmic Blazar Dragon is a level 12 Wind Dragon Synchro monster with 4,000 attack and defense, requiring a Tuner Synchro and two or more non-Tuner Synchro monsters as material, and must be Synchro Summoned. As a quick effect, you can banish this card until the end phase to activate one of three effects. Negate a card or effect activated by your opponent and destroy it. Negate the summon of one or more of your opponent's monsters and if you do, destroy them. Or negate an attack declared by your opponent's monster and if you do, end the battle phase. Cosmic Blazar is a ridiculously powerful monster that seems to have an answer for just about anything. Summons, effects, attacks, it's even hard to overwhelm because by the time it's taken care of the first piece of interaction, it's left the field. So you better have a Kaiju or Layer of Darkness set up because otherwise this card is unstoppable. In fact, the only way around this card was to wipe it from existence. This card wasn't released alongside its anime appearance, partly because when Zone and his compatriots traveled back in time, they changed history in a way that erased this card, making it the first example of an anime-only card that arguably exists more as a real card. But when you mess with the space-time continuum like that, freaky stuff like that is the norm. And unfortunately, without the power of Delta Excel Synchro Summoning, Yusei wouldn't be equipped to handle the Stars of Destruction. But, 
when the chips are down and it's do or die, the first step in achieving your goals is to believe you can. So even if our destiny is overwritten, we'll simply forge a new one with our own hands. When top clear mind isn't an option, we'll go over top clear mind. When the gathering stars become one, a new bond will illuminate the future. Become the path its light shines upon. Limit, over excel synchro, the light of evolution, shooting Quasar Dragon. This level 12 light dragon synchro monster has 4,000 attack and defense, requiring a tuner synchro and two or more non-tuner synchro monsters as material, and must be synchro summoned. This card's maximum number of attacks per battle phase equals the number of non-tuner monsters used as synchro material. So while you can make it using only three monsters, you're incentivized to cram in as many non-tuners as you can. And once per turn, during either player's turn, when a card or effect is activated, you can negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. And when this card leaves the field, you can special summon Shooting Star Dragon from your extra deck. This card was a menace, plain and simple. While it never found a major footing in the the competitive scene, anyone who had this at the lunch tables was feared, and for good reason. Not only was the card itself an Omni Negate when those were a lot less special, its at minimum double attack on a 4000 body was unstoppable, and the deck you had to pilot to enable such a monstrosity proved that you knew how to handle some of the more complex combos the game had to offer. And on top of everything else, it floated into another powerhouse if you ever got rid of it. Shooting Quasar Star may have burned out long ago, but it was the perfect payoff for Mad Scientist Synchro Ladder decks. And watching a finely tuned deck piloted by an experienced duelist can be a thing of beauty all its own. So remember to keep a clear mind, because if so, there will always be a path to victory, and a brighter tomorrow. Everyone, thank you all so much for watching this milestone special. It's wacky to look back and see how far we've come in the past two years and change, and really I've got all of you to thank for that. I'm glad I found an audience that enjoys my cheesy dad jokes and finds the information I provide fun and useful. Thank you all so much for letting me be a part of your lives every week. It's been so fulfilling knowing I get to spend my days making fun stuff for all of you, so for real, from the bottom of my heart, thank you all so much. Today's video, and really all of my work, was sponsored by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commander Adam Zagidel, Nebula Navigators Benjamin Meisner, Eric, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh, Gloomba331, Howling Zangetsu, Inblink, John Manji, Julius Sneezer, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Shooting Star 3300, The Fresh Prince of Conair, The Wizard Moose and Xander Wolfensberger, Cosmic Crusaders Bear Shark to Puss Studios, Serb, Chaz Ghost, Colin Todd, Corbinisms, Cozy Boat 275, Jesus Garcia, Manga Pages, Marion James E. Picotta, RGS and the Legendary Raven, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. Like I said, I'm only able to continue making these videos thanks to the generous contribution of these wonderful, wonderful people, and the more support I get, the more stable my living situation can be, as well as being able to put money into the channel to improve it. So if you want to see things get even better, or if you just want to throw me a few bucks every month to show your appreciation, please check out the links to my Patreon and YouTube channel memberships, which you can find in the description. Channel membership Ships get you fun little emotes you can use in comments and live chat, and joining my Patreon at any tier gets you access to my videos early, so you're getting a little extra something for your contribution. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't already, I highly recommend you check out the first video of this mini-series, where we cover the Synchron and Warrior cards in Yusei's arsenal. And if you want to see two Yugi tubers going at it, check out this playlist for progression polls, where your voice shapes the format. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all at 30k for Jack Atlas Explained. Bye bye Ooh, that was an ordeal. And I got through the entire series without saying card games on motorcycles. No, wait!